take the Blush family from Texas to California, Nevada, Colorado, and Missouri. This will be the second Bitcoin-only road trip for the family this year. Last June, Catherine Bleich, her husband John Bush, and their two children traveled over 4,400 miles using only Bitcoin. However, Bleich, creator of the BitMom.com, says some things have changed over the past six months, creating room for Bitcoin entrepreneurs. A lot has actually changed since our last trip. We had to get creative when we were planning gasoline for this trip because the company we used last time is actually no longer active. There's really... I think a lot of potential in this space for new startups, particularly helping people to get gasoline for Bitcoin. You can follow the Blush family's journey at uncoinventional.com. According to KXAN News, the Austin, Texas Police Department recently sent out a request for information to several companies about buying body cameras for officers. The technology commander claims the department could anticipate a force armed with body cameras by the year 2016. While only about 12 officers currently supply and use their own personal body cameras during duty, there are plans to use additional cameras on auxiliary personnel like canine officers, SWAT agents, and warrant enforcers. Purchases of video equipment follow a national trend of increased police spending on documentary technology. The Liberty Beat is made possible by Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. This is the Liberty Beat for Wednesday, November 12, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. After visiting his girlfriend of two years at her workplace to deliver an unexpected threat for Valentine's Day, violent and controlling boyfriend Matthew Strachan spoke to The Onion about remaining a devoted and committed abuser. On a special day like today, I like doing something extra malicious for Mallory, you know, just so she knows that I've been thinking about hurting her. I mean, you should have seen the look on her face when I came and surprised her at work today. It was so great. I mean, she had no idea I was going to come to her office to belittle and frighten her. I mean, I wanted to do it in front of her friends to really humiliate her. Strachan added that while he doesn't always get a chance to inflict harm on Mallory, he tries his best each and every day to create an environment of sustained physical and emotional abuse to leave her feeling completely alienated and powerless. Just wait till she sees what I have in store for her tonight. (laughs) I love Valentine's Day. For more on this story, check this week's Onion Review. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. This live edition of Free Talk Live... It's Mark in the front seat with Chris Cantwell. That's right. We've uh, Ian. We're giving Ian a night off. He's uh, actually going to be doing the Sunday show uh, with me when now that Stephanie's gone, and uh, he has to have some night of the week off. So he's uh, taking Wednesdays. Oh, that's good. I thought he had like a nervous breakdown or something. Was out running in the streets naked and just couldn't get him on the air. Yeah, he doesn't do that from nervous breakdowns. Usually, some kind of uh, uh, psychotic episode or something. <laughs> So uh, anyway, um, we've got uh, got quite a bit of show prep lined up for you, but you can call in and talk about whatever you want to talk about at 855-450-3733. That's what we do here on Free Talk Live. We provide a forum, a venue for you to talk about whatever is important to you. And of course, we've got opinions, uh, especially if it comes to government stuff, we're going to have opinions on it. If it comes to sports, I probably am not going to have much of an opinion. Not much of an opinion. I'll try to develop one, though, as quick as I can. So 855-450-3733 or Skype, which uh, we are username lrn.fm, and uh, you can use that, and the audio quality is really quite good. So, Cantwell, I noticed that um, the net neutrality has come up again, and this is a really interesting topic where you can really split liberty folks down the middle because... Um, on one end, you have the, the the corporations, the evil corporations, which corporations, are out to get us. man. And on the other end, you have the government, which is going to save us from the corporations, as though that has ever happened. Yeah, I, I find it kind of hysterical, and it, and it drives me nuts every time this comes up, because it's one of those things that— 
you know, I get most of my news from my social media feeds, right? I'm looking at Twitter, I'm looking at Facebook, and pretty mo- pretty much all of the time, those feeds are pretty constantly filled with consistent libertarian thought, you know? And, and net neutrality is one of these things that sort of splits that herd for some reason. People, yes, it does. People really have it in their heads that somehow the government is going to protect them from the corporations in this particular instance for whatever reason. It's it's that and, like, GMO foods are, like, the two things that that I see that with. You know, that they, they're going to well, force them to label foods, and now they're going to force Internet service providers to, you know, provide a certain type of content, and it just drives me absolutely out of my mind to see it. Yeah, to some extent, the market, the market already labels GMO foods, right? Because if you want non-GMO foods, specifically, uh, specific types of GMO, uh, types of food, for instance, uh, corn, uh, you know, grains, basically, if you want your grains to be non-GMO, you better look for a non-GMO label. Because the non-GMO is going to certainly label themselves, and the GMOs are certainly not. I'm not even sure that they can actually label. I think that that's part of the problem is that they can't actually label them non-GMO, but they say organic, right? Which, okay. which, which is you know is supposed to imply that, but sort of even doesn't. Like basically, if you have like soy or something in your food, it's it's basically it's basically almost always GMO, is my understanding of it. You know, I there's see. a certain number of ingredients that you'll always see. I think there's actually a law preventing them from saying that it's non-GMO food. That's a real never, problem then. I never see it, and it's one of these things, you know, with the GMO thing, it's like, yeah, okay, well, maybe we should stop the government from preventing people from saying these things, or, you know, uh, and instead of fo- uh, having the government force other companies to say something else. And in, and in the case of net neutrality, if you're listening at home and you're not familiar with the, with the issue, I mean, the, the idea here is basically that there there is, I think it sort of came up because, like, Netflix and YouTube and certain, like, video streaming outfits wanted, like, a fast lane to users' homes, you know? And that's sort of a, right. a pretty reasonable request. If you've got streaming video, it, it would stand to reason that, like, hey, if I can pay more, can I get my content to their house faster than, you know, the HTML webpage that's going to load a couple of animated GIFs or something like that? It makes sense that they just require that speed in in certain instances you know here i've got time warner cable i've got a 75 megabit download i have no trouble watching netflix or anything like that but if you've got a slower dsl connection or something like that you might want that so there was there were lawsuits about this and basically uh there's an effort to prevent them from even having the capacity to do that because the idea being that you know the corporations will favor certain types of web traffic over others and of course, the the idea of that uh, the advocates of central economic planning are pushing is that the federal government will regulate this and decide what can and cannot be fast laned or blocked, you know, to to your internet connection. But I've never had an internet service provider block a website from me. The only time I've ever not been able to reach a website, dum dum dum, <laughs> when the government comes and shuts the website down, or when somebody didn't pay their bill, of course. So when when it comes to uh, when you when you're logging on to some new website that you know doesn't have a lot of traffic to it, it generally takes longer than some website that you lo- like Facebook or something like that. You know, like Facebook owns half the internet and Google seems to have the other half, and the rest of us sort of run around in the internet's yard, um, you know, <laughs> with no yeah. pants on or whatever. And it. It seems like when you go to these other sites, it's already slower. Is that is there some kind of throttling going on there? Not that I'm aware of. I mean, you know, basically, if you're a huge company like Google or Facebook, I mean, you're just going to buy top-notch everything, right? And you know, if you're ChristopherCantwell.com and you're and you're struggling to stay in the top half million websites on the planet, then you know, you probably have a cheaper hosting plan, such as I have. So you might not have, you know, the the fastest, greatest thing, or. Uh, you know, uh, or you might have, you know, a, a pretty fast thing that's just overloaded because you're getting a great deal of traffic and, and we're a lot slower to upgrade our websites and our web hosting packages and stuff like that. So I'm not aware of any throttling going on in that case. Uh, I think if I'm correct, the, the current court cases in the air are preventing that from happening, from giving anybody a fast lane or from giving anybody a slow lane. Right now, I don't believe that there's a situation that they can have uh, slower, fast lanes on the internet based on the type of content that you're producing. That's not my understanding of it. Yeah, I wouldn't think that that would be the case either. I mean, obviously the government can shut you down if they want to shut you down, but uh, you know, it doesn't seem like the content really matters. Now, that's what people are worried about, though. And I mean, I I can see why they're worried. Uh, the claim is is there's some kind of regulation now, and that 
Um, without net neutrality, that regulation is going to go away somehow. I'm not exactly sure how that is. And it's going to be bad, bad, bad. Because I think that everybody's comfortable with what we have today. I'm certainly comfortable with the internet of today. I mean, you know, I, I, there's things that I would like to improve about it, don't get me wrong, but my access to the internet is excellent. I mean, the only thing that I could see, you know, an internet service provider doing is blocking something like torrents or something like that, things that open them up to legal liabilities. Because what happens is when you get like a DMCA notice or, or what I uh, – you usually won't get a DMCA notice at your house, but like the uh, but the the internet service provider will get one, right? So I worked at an internet service provider. We were a data center, and so we would we would host co-locations. We would host dedicated servers. We were a web hosting company, and sometimes people would use our network for nefarious purposes. When the legal threats came, they didn't go to our users. The legal threats came to us. And so we would have to respond to our users on the basis of having a legal threat levied against us. So if you're worried about, say, your internet service provider blocking you from using torrents or um, uh, sending out certain types of advertisements or engaging in certain uh, probing of networks or whatever it is that you think that your internet service provider might be uh, anxious to prevent you from doing, Really, the only reason they're ever going to do that is because the government is going to be threatening your internet service provider. These are all the results of legal threats. They're worried about ending up in a courtroom and being sued by a, a content producer or a copyright holder. And so they're going to send you a letter and say, hey, we're going to cut your internet connection off if you don't stop torrenting you know, Adobe Photoshop and all these copyrighted programs and the newest movie that just came out. Let's talk to Brett about it. He wants to talk about uh, net neutrality. Brett, where are you calling from? Hey, I'm calling from uh, Des Moines, Iowa. Great. So what's on your mind? Well, I'm, I guess every time this net neutrality topic comes up, people, you know, rightfully so, they like to argue these different uh, – the problems with uh, government stepping in and, and regulating things, which, which I agree. Um, that would be a problem, and it's, it, it's completely unnecessary. The reason that we're in this situation is because the government grants local monopolies, essentially. I mean, every major city – or minor city in the country you go to, you have one cable company and you have one telecom provider. And those usually are your only two choices. And that's, an, that's not the free market at work. That's an artificial constraint put into place by local governments. So now, I that's true solution. in some cases, and it's not true in others. I think as the metro gets larger, it's more likely to be true. Of course, that's where all the people live is the larger metros. But as it gets smaller, in a lot of cases, it's just an economy of scale, and it's not worth Internet service providers to, uh, to, 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 to you know, more, more than one to be in an area. Brad, I'm going to hold on to you here. Um, you can give a call at 855-450-FREE. Did you know by age 50, half of all men have an enlarged prostate? This means more urges to urinate, longer bathroom trips, waking at night to urinate, or issues with sex. If this sounds familiar, call us now, because we're shipping free bottles of Super Beta Prostate to listeners of this station. Super Beta Prostate is a non-prescription formula guaranteed to reduce the symptoms of your enlarged prostate. It's yours free. Pay only shipping and handling. Just call 1-800-856-4195. In clinical trials, the ingredient in Super Beta Prostate was shown to reduce urges to urinate, improve bladder emptying, reduce waking at night to urinate, and improve quality of life. This Super Beta Prostate free offer is for listeners of this station, but it won't last. Don't wait. Just call 1-800-856-4195. That's 1-800-856-4195. Call 1-800-856-4195. Hi, this is Mark Edge, host of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the very economic engine that powers this country, with a printing press tethered to Washington politicians, bureaucrats, and central bankers. How can we put our trust in paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Come see gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. With Washington, D.C. delivering more debt and printed promises, common sense tells us the future of the trend is obvious. Everyone listening should visit gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938. I trust Midas Resources for my gold, silver, platinum, and you can too. Again, I want you to have this book, and it's free. It's gold.freetalklive.com or 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938.
Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at gunsandweed.com or on Amazon. Hey! That's gunsandweed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers, and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com you can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, 855-450. Free, that's 855-450-3733. You can call in and talk about whatever is on your mind. We've been talking about net neutrality this evening. By the way, it's Mark with you. Crantwell. Yes, and uh, Ian, who is uh, lurking about, wanted me to specify that he's not that he's taking all Wednesdays off. He's taking this Wednesday off, and uh, he's going to kind of float around and uh, take off uh, different days. Anyway. It'll be good to have him back next week. Hopefully. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, I think it's a great idea what he's doing. He's going to be on Sundays and then take off whatever day during the week uh, works for him, the same way that I take Fridays off. So 603-513-2222. I'm, I, what am I? I'm, what? Uh, I'm giving out uh, like the hotline number. That would not be very helpful oh, to anybody. Oh no! Don't there. do that. No. <laughs> so, excuse me. Eight fifty five four fifty free. Is it an ISIS crisis or just more hype? Antiwar.com has the answers. Antiwar.com has the facts. Antiwar.com has the readership. What Antiwar.com doesn't have is a pot of gold. The war machine has the magic of the Federal Reserve's printing press and the mainstream media. All AnnieWar.com has is you. The AnnieWar.com staff is down to a skeleton crew with minimal pay. They're committed to keeping the website up with the best of the worst of all the bad news, but they can't do it for free. They can't do it without you. They need your donation. Please go to AnnieWar.com and donate today or call, give them a call. They're proud, they'll are proud. they proudly and gladly take your Bitcoins if you're a Bitcoin billionaire. Um, or any if you have any Bitcoins, they'll take them. AnnieWar.com slash donate because war is the health of the state. Let's We're talking about net neutrality, and uh, let's go back to Brett. Brett's calling in from Des Moines, and uh, he was uh, saying that essentially— uh, Brett, let me see if I get this right. That essentially we have, because the major metros in the United States only allow certain cable companies and certain phone uh, providers to uh, basically give us internet, that that's really the problem, that there's no competition in the marketplace, and that's why the government the government makes a problem and then claims it has to solve it. That's correct. And so what what we're really talking about here, and everybody likes to use Netflix as the example, which is a great example. Um if if you had choice between you know instead of two ISPs five or six or or ten, then the the problem solves itself eventually because obviously as as consumers we flock to whoever provides the best service for what 
we want to use it for, whether it's Netflix or whether it's gaming or whether it's checking your Facebook. You know, they're, they're, when, when you have more players in the market, the, this becomes a complete non-issue. And instead of having government and the FCC try to step in to regulate things, which you and I both know how that would turn out, you know, I, I really feel that just deregulating it and letting more players come into the, each market that will that'll solve the problem. I I, re, I, I guess I I fail to see how how it can get much more complicated than that. I, I I definitely tend to agree with you there. I would say that we have a little bit more competition in internet service providers than seems to be portrayed. I mean, we do have really fast uh, wireless service now. I mean, you could get a Verizon hotspot. You can get uh, yeah, my but... my my cell phone acts as a hotspot. I've got the the Straight Talk plan from Walmart, and I'm on, I'm on AT and T towers. I've got 4G internet access, well, I, and it's I, unlimited. I get, I get what you're saying with that, but the the problem with 4G is that all the providers have you know data caps and it you know you use you stream one movie and you're done for the month so that's not really a solution you know in, I, in I, most I, cases yeah but you know we do have we do have some some amount of choice right and and so when people are talking about uh saying well we've got this this problem because of the government granted monopoly if they they see that they can't get rid of the government granted monopoly which in most cases as you mentioned is is not a monopoly but a duopoly at the very least you've got a, sure. you've got you know you've got your Verizon and you've got your cable company in in most metro areas now right um, as a matter of fact one of the things I, I had written an article previously when the when the Supreme Court was trying to block the uh, the Comcast Time Warner merger right that they were saying well if the if you allow these companies to merge you're going to have a situation where there's no competition and and so that we can't allow this to happen because they'll have a monopoly and like you know the the court just sort of seemed to neglect to realize that these companies already had basically monopolies over the services that they provided in the areas that they provide them and then merging only meant that they had bigger territories um well Again, what when it comes to that, I mean, now we're kind of getting off topic, but when it comes to to that actual situation, that that does affect uh, what we what's you know what we're calling net neutrality because if they're a bigger company, if they if they have more uh, negotiating power with providers such as Netflix, that you know, like so so because they pro also provide content, the cable companies they provide video content, so. To them, they see services such as Netflix or Hulu or YouTube as competitors. So they're less likely to to uh, agree to better uh, peering relationships with the, between their networks um, and things like that. And if the company was, if you know, if, if if they were to merge, that gives them double the power that they individually have now. So I mean, I I, I agree. I get what what people are saying when it comes to that, um, but but you know I'm just, I'm kind of ranting now. But <laughs> <laughs> well, I I've got to say the uh, the net neutrality uh, conversation is a complicated one. I tend uh, to you know my eyes tend to glaze over at some point when uh, people are talking about it. And thanks for the call, appreciate it, Brett. Um, but I I think that it I, I think it's important because it affects the vast majority of people in the United States and. It's difficult to know sort of who's on the, the right side and not on the right side. I'm just always leery of the government uh, coming to save me. And and really that's true either on the uh, the side of uh, GMO labeling or um, on the, the side of net neutrality. Let's go to Glenn in Philadelphia. Glenn, you're on Free Talk Live. Hello, gentlemen. Hello, Glenn. What's on your mind? Hi. Um, well, I call about other stuff. But uh, well, since you're on the net neutrality... Uh, don't forget, with Time Warner, Warner as a separate company uh, before being subsumed by Comcast, the by, you know Comcast, Verizon, Time Warner, um, yes, they may have market monopolies within their regions, but don't forget, they also compete on the stock exchange. So when when you have a merger like that, it cuts out another you know competitor from the stock exchange. So yes, it does like synergistically increase the monopoly. Um, also, what we need the FCC to control the Internet so that the Internet can be managed as efficiently as Soviet-era farming. <laughs> <laughs> we just need a five-year plan. Yeah, exactly. That's what we need. Um, what I called about, I also wanted to make the distinction between organic and uh, GMO. They have oh, good. Save us on that one. Other. Yeah. Yeah. Or organic has to do with the way... You know, things like the soil, fertilizer, and chemicals with which the food is treated. And according to the Federal Trade Commission, an abysmally small percentage 
of the, of the plant of the product need to be organic before the word organic can be slapped on there. So we have these these big, um, you know, organic departments and like huge stores like Wegmans and stuff like that. And they're increasing the number of organic items, but precious little of those products may be organic. And they're really for people with more money than brains. Uh, GMO is a huge issue because it has to do with the genetics of the seeds, the plants, bulbs, tubers, whatever the plant is produced from. Some of these things have some notably deleterious effects. And um, I would suggest that people can, uh, sometimes people have trouble with, you know, with digesting them. Um, and if you look at some of the animal studies, they produce some pretty bad effects in terms of sterilizing rats and things like that. Uh, you know, it doesn't hurt to take uh, probiotics and enzyme supplements to assist with digestion. Thanks and, for the call, uh, Glenn. You know, Appreciate it. Yeah. You can give us a call, 855-450-3733. Free Talk Live. With autumn in the air, it's time to think about getting ready for winter. And it's time to save at HerbalHealer.com. You'll find amazing seasonal savings to prepare you for the fight against cold and flu season. Like Oregacillin to promote lung health. 30 capsules regularly $34.95, now only $25. HHA Olive Leaf, the natural antiviral, normally $16.95, now 60 capsules are just $12. HHA Elderberry Power, a great flu and virus fighter, regularly $16.95, 60 capsules, now $10. Save on all our homeopathic detoxes. Choose from lungs, kidney, liver, brain, libido, or whole body, normally $26.95, now just $20. Visit HerbalHealer.com and click on the Fall Winter Specials button to save on all our natural cold and flu-fighting products. Also explore our Herbal Healer Academy Correspondence Courses that teach you how to handle your health naturally. HerbalHealer.com, healing the world with nature, one person at a time, since 1988. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. I'm Mark Stevens of the No Stay Project. And are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you're only helping the government. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available right now. Learn it, use it, spread it. So get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you to go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring Simon to the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable me. here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, whoa. hey, 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 hey. hey. Who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is... You ain't going to make it. Wait, no. Now. Wait a minute. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Because you're scared of property. What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? You're being served. What is this? 
Democrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the wind working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. You're listening to the best Liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Free Talk Live, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can call in and talk about whatever's on your mind here on Free Talk Live. It's Mark with you. And Cantwell. Ian is off this evening, and uh, that means we can do what we want. You can also call in on the Skype line, lrn.fm. I want to tell you about the Texas Bitcoin Conference. Bitcoin's still on the rise, and to prove it to you, you can head on over to the second uh, second annual Texas Bitcoin Conference at the Movie Th- Moody Theater in downtown Austin on March the 28th and 29th in 2015. Loaded with the best and the brightest speakers, the latest ex- exhibitions on Bitcoin, as well as hosting the second million-dollar Bitcoin 2.0 hackathon. This was a huge deal the last time, um, and they gave out a lot of money to different companies and really kicked them kicked off. Uh, I think four companies came out of their uh, their hackathon. They've uh, even invited the entire Texas legislature to allow them to see firsthand that not enacting complicated regulations encourages innovative innovation and job creation. The Texas Bitcoin Conference is going to prove that Bitcoin is a force for good. If you're knee-deep in Bitcoin or just interested, this is the place to be. On March the 28th and 29th, along with the kickoff event on the 27th, Right now, they're doing. Um, they're even doing a white paper uh, call. If you've got an idea that may make this community grow, Free Talk Live was there last year, and it's a, a phenomenal Bitcoin event. I was, I thought it was wonderful, and we're excited to be part of it again in 2015. Head on over to TexasBitcoinConference.com to get tix- tickets. Details about the all the ways that you can be a part of the t- second annual Texas Bitcoin Conference. You don't want to miss it. It's te- TexasBitcoinConference.com. So. Can't, well, the net neutrality thing, um, I think, is interesting. I, I, I think that's what is most interesting about it is, is that they think they're just going to change this without legislation. That sort of the executive is going to go make an end run around uh, uh, the legislator on this. And that's a real problem in yeah, my mind. They, they're sort of trying to get the FTC and FCC to step in and sort of handle this and just, hey, we don't need to have your elected representatives even handle this. Is you know, Not that I think that they're any better at doing things like that. But they're just going to do it through whatever regulatory authority they they feel that they've already been handed by whatever act was passed however long ago that gives them jurisdiction over every aspect of our miserable lives. But I think that uh, another thing that's uh, really getting sort of overlooked is how millennials are faring in this economy because it's been kind of rough for them, but quite rough for them. I I wonder if they even know what a good economy looks like in some cases. What what is like what counts as a millennial now? Like if you are coming into your adolescence, in I would have to look up something. the exact number, but I think basically if you're born in uh, the mid '80s on, you're essentially a millennial, and then All something right. after that, you're. I, I you like know. just missed it. I just yeah. missed it. Uh, is that so? I'm a full full on Gen Gen X and on my mm-hmm. side, but. Uh, um, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm not exactly sure what a millennial is uh, as far as the age bracket goes, but um, it's, it's a young person who uh, reached adulthood around the year 2000. is, uh, and, and they're also calling them Generation Y because this is Generation X, which I think is really insulting to call a generation, um, you know, Generation Y because the previous one was called Generation X. Not acceptable. No, unacceptable and not very creative either. It's just your Generation 3. Yeah, right. You know, just- so I'm wondering what they're going to – my son is six years old. He's not a millennial. Um, he's going to be whatever's after millennials. Um, I mean, what is he, Generation Z? Uh, I mean, what what is that going to be? And I and- I think we have to – I think they have to get a little older for us to know. And and then it'll be, what, Z1 and Z2? Come on. Get, get creative. Whoever makes up these names, you suck. 
Well, the, the the millennial thing isn't. I mean, the it's millennial not, makes sense. Yeah, it's not yeah. going out on a limb. But, but the generation X Y Z, like really. Yeah, I think that they were just generation Y was a placeholder until the real name came along. Okay, All that, right. that's, that makes, that's how that I feel makes about more it. Sense. Anyway. But here from the economic policy, excuse me, the economic collapse blog, which I, uh, yeah, you know, I like some of the stuff they they write about. Uh, the twenty four things that have millennials screaming mad about our unfair economy. Number one, the current savings rate for millennials is negative 2%. Uh, that's, I guess, taking into account the rate of inflation. No, yeah. it's taking uh, into account that they borrow a lot of money. They have to borrow a lot uh, of money. Oh, oh, okay. All right. I thought you were talking about like the interest rate on the bank account. I was like, is there going to have negative interest rates on your bank account? I think it was year, uh, 20, 2005 that uh, the, the, the entire savings rate for everybody in the United States yeah. was like, Negative five. Right. It's the saving. It's the rate at which they're saving money, as opposed to the. I was thinking of the interest rate on their savings accounts. Now, so yeah, they're they're borrowing a lot more money than they're saving. It's only negative two percent. Is that is that, it's actually that low? Yeah. I mean, well, there's probably some good savers out there among them, and not everybody went out and got a useless college degree. Yeah, that's actually like encouraging news. I thought that all of these idiots had like taken out hundreds of thousands of dollars in student loans to like study, I don't know, gender studies or some <laughs> nonsense like this that had no hope of getting them a career. Well, um, also many of them are living at home. So if your if your parents are paying for your college dorm and you're taking out everything you've got for in uh, for college loans, you're certainly going to uh, spend more than you make. But if you can go out and you can, can get a job and live at home when you do it, uh, I mean, if you've got a generation of people that are living at home, then it's not it's not this stigma, right? So if I was 25 years old, I remember we actually we had a friend who was 28 years old who lived at home with his parents, and this would have been 1988 or so. And we made fun of him. Yeah. Yeah, for living at home with his parents. And, uh, you know, I didn't, but I think everybody else did. I thought, well, what a good gig. Um, I thought it was kind of interesting that uh, at the same time that he could leave and did not. But, uh, you know, I mean, I thought it was kind of interesting. Yeah. But if you've yeah, got a whole generation. Some time ago that there was like a lot of stigma behind that. But like now you can like be 35 and live with your parents and get laid. Like I can't. <laughs> I, I'm of the opinion that if it isn't, uh, if it, it, it if it wasn't for coupling, um, I probably would have never left the house in the first place. Like there were, there was, there was a woman there who would f cook me food, uh, you know, reasonably clean up after me, do my, um, you know, laundry. You know, it was pretty awesome gig. That's Obviously, as I as I got older, that uh, probably would have changed to some extent. And but all of a sudden, you started to want more from a woman. <laughs> Mom wasn't going to provide. Mom wasn't going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, number two here, a survey conducted earlier this year found that 47 percent of all millennials are using at least half of their paychecks to pay off debt. So speaking to this debt thing again, they I, I don't think these people can afford anything. They can just afford enough to go out and drink and then come back, fall, collapse into their parents' bed, you know, yeah. the bed their bed at their parents' house, um, and wake up with a hangover and go and do it all over again. Half on debt, half on booze, and then let's just see if this situation improves over time. Yeah, this is, this is great for your liver. <laughs> well, that's okay, because now Obamacare is going to take care of their liver. I mean, they could just go drink themselves to death, and then they'll tax a liver out of a healthy person who who is responsible and give it to the young you, you, you know with these kind of uh, situations though they're liable to try to su commit suicide or something you know obamacare is not going to fix that well you know that's why they have to outlaw suicide because i mean if you have people killing themselves then that's going to really screw up the uh you know the tax base and if you can't have healthy young people paying into the system then how are we going to take care of these sick old people number three for u.s households that are headed up by someone under the age of 40 Average wealth is uh, still about 30% below what it was back in 2007. So for those that are living on their own, they are scraping by compared to what people in 2007 were, were making and um, what it was like for them. I'm surprised that the—I I can't say that I'm— terribly surprised but i'm sort of surprised that the decline is that rapid right i mean you'd think that you know there's a lot of terrible things have been going on in this economy for quite a bit of time but really just in the last seven years it's tanked that bad that's sickening man it's it's a mess let's go to kasha calling in from uh, wilmington kasha you're on free talk live hi hey what's on your mind um <laughs> well a lot of different things what'd you call in about um, well, 
Maybe maybe you can start. think about it during the uh, commercial break because it doesn't sound like Kasha has her thoughts together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let us know what you uh, what you want to talk about here, Kasha. Um, you can give us a call too at eight five five four five zero three seven three. Maybe you take some notes first, and uh, also you could do that or um, Skype lrn.fm. Eight fifty five four fifty free free talk live. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. The experts at Web.com want to build your business a successful website for free, just like we did for these current Web.com customers. We've used and and looked at other website designers, but there's nobody better than Web.com. Web.com can build your website in as little as seven days free. Plus, we'll promote it on all the major search engines like Google, Yahoo, and Bing. If after 30 days you're happy, we'll continue to provide promotion, hosting, support, and maintenance, all for one low monthly fee. If not, cancel and pay nothing. If you're in business today and you don't have a web presence, you won't be taken seriously. Call right now and you'll also get a free .com or .net domain name for your new website powered by VeriSign, the world's leading domain name provider. Call 800-297-0154. That's 800-297-0154. No upfront charge for site build, after which ongoing fees apply. Rights to site are relinquished when canceled. Domain included during active service, after which fees apply. That's 800-297-0154. You can't win if you don't enter, and you actually can improve your chances of winning a prize drawing if you wrinkle up your entry blank. I'm Holland Cook from survivalspeech.com, and I speak from experience. Why this works? If they'll be spinning the drum before drawing, your entry blank will move around more than, and not adhere to, other perfectly flat entry blanks. And if they don't spin the drum and merely reach into a box full of other perfectly flat entry blanks, many of which are sticking together, yours will feel different to the person reaching in. When you win, act surprised. And if you're looking for work, this is a metaphor. For more tips on sticking out in a world where just too much blends into the blah, 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 hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, 855-450-3733. That's 855-450-FREE. It's Mark with you. 
And Cantwell. You can give us a call, talk about what's on your mind on this live edition of Free Talk Live, or you can call us on Skype. Our username's LRN. That's LRN as in Liberty Radio Network. LRN.FM. What we've been talking about this evening is, uh, well, I guess GMO foods, uh, net neutrality, and now we're talking about the 24 reasons that millennials are screaming mad about our unfair economy. Yeah, and they seem to have good reason to be. I mean, I don't think I quite qualify as a millennial. I'm, I was very early 80s, like 1980, <laughs> right there. So uh, I, I don't. I guess I don't qualify as a millennial. I was just. I guess I'm on the edge of Generation X. Is that without that, that? I guess it is. Sense? It's kind of interesting that the band. Uh, I believe after it's a Billy Idol band called Generation X. Um, that after which our generation is named. I believe. Um, and there may be other stories behind it, but I certainly remember a uh, band by Billy Idol. It was called Gen X, and it was. Um, it'd be interesting the fact that this band existed before you were born, and you're still part of that. <laughs> you would think that'd be the ending point of it, or something like that, because yeah. you'd have to be alive to hear the band. So anyway, um, going on here with the. Uh, but before we do, I want to uh, tell you real quick about the Free Talk Lives. Weekly Digest. Now, if you listen to uh, Free Talk Live on podcast, and you know that there's a lot of content generated. We do 21 hours a week of live radio. That uh, shrinks down to about 14 hours a week when you uh, pull the ads out of it, of, co- um, of, of content for the podcast. And you've got to have, this is a pretty high commitment level to be able to listen to 14 hours, two hours a day of Free Talk Live. Well, there is a, there's a solution for you. That's the Free Talk Live Weekly Digest. You can go to uh, freetalklive.com, and on the left-hand side of the page, you can scroll down just a little bit. You'll see this list of listen and share under listen and share. And uh, there you can sign up for the RSS feed for FTL's Weekly Digest, or that's the um, podcast, the really simple server. Or you can go to our SoundCloud page. which will um, There's a link there for that, too. And you can sign up there, too. So... We try to make it easy for you. That's a handy thing, I think. Indeed. Because it is a lot of commitment, too. Yeah, and it's a good way to catch up, too. A lot of people feel like, well, I can't listen to Free Talk Live anymore. I'm behind. Well, just listen to the weekly podcast. It'll get you about, it's about 90 minutes, I believe, is what they uh, shrink 14 hours down to. Yeah, and if if you listen to enough of it, then we can start telling inside jokes, and you'll actually get them because you'll have been (laughs) listening to the show. Yeah. Indeed, and uh, thanks so much for to uh, Benjamin for for doing that. He does it's his project, and uh, if you if you do listen to it, throw him some Bitcoin. He, he'd love that. Going on the twenty four reasons in two thousand and five, the home homeownership rate for U.S. households headed up by somebody under the age of thirty five was approximately forty uh, was approximately forty three percent. So that's the homeownership rate for people under the age of thirty five was forty three percent. I was one of those people. I thought it was a good idea back then. You know, it, there was a time in recent history when it was a good idea to home a home. You know, <laughs> you didn't have uh, all the problems, and there was uh, compared to how much it was worth. Um, these days, I I tend to wonder. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I do not own my home. I am actually. I'm about to move again. I'm just moving. Uh, not even two miles away. I don't think, but. Uh, there's uh, some upsides to not owning a home. You can just pick up and go, and if you don't like a situation, then you get up and you leave it. If you own your home, then you know, you're know you sort of stuck with this thing and a whole gang of debt hanging over your head and leveraging credit and whatnot, and there's, uh, there's a lot of downsides to that. Yeah, I feel like— Liabilities. Own, you know, I'm a homeowner now, and I feel like you need to sort of have a good reason to own a home. If the reason you're owning a home is is because, well, they told me to. That's not a good reason. Uh, it's a crappy reason to own a home. Yeah. If you're, I don't know, you would get a sound studio and you don't want to be too close to, uh, you know, don't want to be right next to people in an apartment or something like that, but you could just rent a place and put together a sound studio. Yeah, if that's you, what I did. If you have a big giant dog the size of a camel or something like that, um, you might need your own place. Uh, you know, if you want to do some serious gardening, 
uh, you know, these kind of things. There might be some there might be some good reasons, but I think you should have a better reason than, you know, they said it was a good idea to have a home. Well, the mortgage brokers, real estate agents and the other people and, you know, the, the pool companies and all the people that want <laughs> you to own a home think it's a good idea for you to own a home. All the people who make money from you buying a house think it's a good idea for you to own a home. That's amazing. Yeah, it uh, <laughs> certainly is. Um, I mean, think about all the repair people, all the costs of a home. I'm not sure that it's the the greatest thing in the world. I rather like it when something like goes wrong in my house and I call somebody else and it's their problem. Yeah, indeed. Know? So anyway, the uh, the number of people uh, that own a home is under the age of 35 is down more than 10 percent or about 10 percent. So number five, one recent survey discovered that an astounding 31.1 percent. I thought this was an amazing number of adults in the 18 to 34 age bracket are currently living with their parents. So there you go. One third of millennials are living at home with their parents. That, uh, I don't know. We, we, we talked about that before. That seemed like a good bit for a little while there, you know, but if they're doing it because they're, you know, not having other options and that's obviously a, a terribly negative thing. You yeah. Know? yeah. I was, I was in that position not too long ago. I mean, I, uh, you know, had some employment issues and went back with, uh, you know, mom and dad and it was a source of shame for me. Right. You know, and it's not even like looked down upon in society as much as it used to be. There's not nearly the stigma behind it, but it was not, uh, uh, the, the most comfortable of situations. I would agree with you, and I think that there's advantages to it. And as it becomes more socially acceptable, I think that it would be a less of a problem. Um, it certainly depends on your situation with your parents. But it kind of, for me, brings up another question. Exactly when is it that you're moving back in with your parents versus they're moving in with you? Um, what's the d- define it for me? Because my mother, uh, you know, comes up and stays with us about half the year so that she can hang out with uh, my grandson. And, um, you know, she might as well. Why does she want to be in some big place down in Florida where without folks to talk to? And she can be up at our house with folks to talk to. Certainly, she helps with uh, the bills when she's she's up. Is Am I living with my mother? The answer is yes, uh, I am living yeah, with my mother. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, living with, the, but we get the connotation here, right? You know, having mom come over as a guest in your home is quite a different experience than I'm SOL, mom, can I come <laughs> sleep there and eat your food, you know? <laughs> I'm happy to eat her food. <laughs> if, she, if she leaves food about, I will eat it. Um, <laughs> going on with number six of the 24 reasons millennials are screaming mad about our unfair economy, at this point, the top... 0.1% of all Americans have about as much wealth as the bottom 90% of all Americans combined. So needless to say, there aren't very many millennials in that top 0.1%. And this is the the sort of the income disparity or the uh, wealth disparity in this country. Is, is It's getting larger. It is. And, you know, I'm not big on concern for wealth disparities i think that some people are always going to be better at getting stuff than other people and that's something that people need to sort of learn to deal with and just can their envy and stop complaining about people having stuff that they don't but when you do have this you know ultra small minority that is almost certainly very politically connected and is obtaining those benefits from uh, the force of the state and through these uh, central economic planning measures that they all claim are going to help these millennials get yeah. out of their debts. Right, because trickle-down economics might or might not have worked if trickle-down economics was ever allowed to have worked. But what it was is, in fact, a ruse so that you know the wealthy could uh, you know, insert themselves in, in the trickle-down. They, they, you know, they'd allow the wealth to trickle down and then be the ones who would you know get the trickling. So yeah, they, they, that's a real they, problem. <laughs> They don't allow the trickle down to happen. They <laughs> recycle the trickling. Right. And uh, I mean, I would also say real quick that trickle down economics is a far cry from free market economics. And I sort of went into this, you know, uh, you see that video of Hillary Clinton saying that businesses don't create jobs. Did you, you you guys probably killed this the day that it happened on the radio, no? What? Um, yeah, they were. Do- there was the you didn't build that from Obama, and then the other one from Clinton, where uh, businesses don't create jobs. Yeah, and then somebody. I actually I, I put it on the Facebook page, and then I actually had somebody comment. Well, they don't. And, well, who the heck creates jobs then? Yeah, and and I I had written on the subject, and what she does is she goes into saying like you know oh trickle down economics. This has been tried, and 
you know, trickle down economics is not market economy, right? Trickle down economics is sort of this idea that you're going to give these, you know, extraordinary benefits to the people at the top of the economic food chain, and that by giving those extraordinary benefits to them, that they are going to somehow benefit the rest of the economy by buying goods and services and that sort of thing. You know, when they're buying luxuries and couches and cars and everything like that, it's going to help manufacturing. That is not free market economics where you leave the economy alone and people do what they do best, which is trade and redistribute things as they see fit according to everybody's needs and wants. Yep. Well, we're going to talk about the other. Uh, we're going down the list here of the 24 reasons why millennials are screaming mad about our unfair economy. And you can call us at 855-450-3733 on Free Talk Live. Have you thought about owning gold? There are lots of reasons to own precious metals. A hedge against inflation. When the dollar tanks, metals go up. A barter currency. You can disempower the Fed by using real money. And no one knows the future. In an economic collapse, metals are likely to be a currency. Do as I've done for years. Buy your gold and silver and precious metals from Midas Resources through gold.freetalklive.com. That's gold.freetalklive.com. Do you drink coffee? Was the last cup of coffee you had really good? Free Talk Live has teamed up with BuzzBox to bring you the best of the best coffee. Shade grown, organic, top 1% grade Arabica. But what's different is for every 10 people that get their coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com, we can give another micro loan through Kiva. Get a free pound to try it out. A free pound of the best of the best coffee. Help others one cup at a time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. <laughs> This is Davi Barker from ShinyBadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at ShinyBadges.com, write WORMS in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Wednesday, November 12th, 2014. Silver is trading at $15.66 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,169 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $395. Antiwar.com reports U.S. drone strikes fired four missiles at a house and vehicle in North Waziristan, killing at least six people and wounding three others, according to local tribesmen. Though Pakistani officials identified the slain as militants and claimed some of them were reportedly foreigners, none of the slain in the attack has actually been identified by name. This is, of course, standard operating procedure for U.S. drone strikes in Pakistan, and it is extremely rare for any victim, whether civilian or militant to ever be publicly identified. The U.S. has increased the number of attacks in Pakistan's tribal areas in recent months after nearly a year of halting such attacks at the behest of the Sharif government. Since the resumption, the Pakistani government has not offered the loud condemnation of the U.S. strikes that was common previously. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800-874-9760. 
The Las Vegas Review-Journal reports Jim Dunsing, an attorney from Clark County, Nevada, was convicted Monday on three felony charges stemming from a roadside confrontation with Las Vegas police. After more than a week-long trial, a jury convicted Dunsing on charges of resisting a police officer, carrying a concealed weapon, and unlawful possession of a firearm in connection with a traffic stop on October 29, 2009. An officer shot Dunsing three times when he tried to run from the scene. Dunsing ran an unsuccessful bid on the Libertarian ticket this year to become Clark County's top prosecutor and head the office that pursued the criminal charges against him. He was the only opponent to incumbent Steve Wolfson, who was re-elected with 72% of the vote. Dunsing took the witness stand last week at trial and said the officer never told him why he was being arrested. Dunsing told jurors, quote, I was trying to process what was going on. I thought he had the wrong person. End quote. Dunsing was hit with probes from a stun gun and started to run because he feared for his life because he has heart and lung problems. Dunsing said that running wasn't really a conscious decision. His law practice centers on fixing parking tickets, and when he filed to run for district attorney, he vowed to stop prosecuting nonviolent crimes. District Judge Michelle Levitt ordered Dunsing held in Clark County's detention center until a January sentencing where he faces 12 years in prison. In the spirit of Motorhome Diaries and Liberty on Tour, I intend to take the message of peace, love, and liberty on the road. During the 104-day trip, I'll be visiting at least 10 cities across the country, speaking to people about the ideas of peace, love, and liberty. To find out more about the tour or to donate, visit tour.fppradio.com. That's T-O-U-R dot fppradio.com. Reuters reports Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe will postpone a planned tax increase and call a general election for December in what would be the biggest shift in Abe's economic policies since he came to power two years ago. Abe said on Tuesday he had not decided on the timing of an election, but the conservative Sankei newspaper said he would delay the increase in the national sales tax by a year and a half to April 2017 and call a snap election for the lower house of parliament. A government official close to the Prime Minister's office told Reuters on Tuesday that Abe was likely to delay the tax hike, which could derail a promised economic recovery. Major political parties have already begun gearing up for a possible election. Opposition politicians say delaying the tax hike would show the Premier's Abenomics growth policies have failed. No election needs to be called until 2016, but political insiders said Abe, whose support is relatively high but falling, might seek to lock in his mandate before taking unpopular steps next year, such as restarting nuclear reactors and passing legislation to allow Japanese troops to fight abroad for the first time since World War II. Abe made up his mind to delay the tax increase as third quarter GDP is likely to be weak. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. I'd like to tell you about our newest innovations in helping to keep our communities safe. Problem Creation Policing. Problem Creation Policing, or PCP, is a way to get the entire community involved in maintaining a safe neighborhood. This is more than just a neighborhood watch. We plan to have officers on the ground helping, aiding, and surveilling for illicit activities. You never know when you're gonna find some young punk doing something illegal out in public. That's why we're gonna have officers everywhere. You never know when they're going to pop up. So we want PCP in our homes, at our jobs, and in our schools. We want PCP everywhere. How can you get involved in PCP? Well, for starters, you can call your local authorities and ask them how you can get PCP. I'm Byron Kingsley from the Citizens Respecting the Authority of Police. Talk Live, 855-450 free. That's 855-450-3733. You can give us a call and talk about whatever's on your mind, this live edition of Free Talk Live. It's Mark with you. And Cantwell, ChristopherCantwell.com. And you can, uh, yeah, that's right, Christopher Cantwell coming from his uh, blog, ChristopherCantwell.com, and some garbage podcast. Does your other work? It is, it is quite a garbage podcast, <laughs> as it turns out. 
<laughs> you can give us a call on Skype, uh, username lrn.fm. But it might be easiest for you to use the telephone. The number is 855-450-3733. And what we are talking about is sort of the economic plight of millennials. This is important because this generation has had it much harder than previous generations. So when the rest of us caught a cold, they got pneumonia. Uh, The unemployment rate was significantly higher for young people than it is today. And all this hullabaloo about the minimum wage, it's basically saying, I just don't want to hire young people. Because consider for a second, when you look at the minimum wage, what it's going to do. The minimum wage is supposed to be. I understand that it's not. It's it's probably because it exists, it's not. Uh, But it's supposed to be a floor at which we can expect a young person to come in and and get paid. So, you know, this is the minimum amount you're going to give a 14-year-old to come in and bag groceries or cut some lawns or do whatever. That's what a minimum wage is supposed to be. Yeah, and if he sweeps your porch for less than that, and well, everybody's got to go to jail. Right. So I'm not sure. I'm sure that there are peop- um, young people getting paid less than that, but it, certainly for a big business, minimum wage is what it's supposed to, to be. So when I was uh, working a minimum wage, it was $3.35 an hour, and now it's, I think, 7 bucks uh, nationally, and it's higher than that in, in a lot of places. But because we've had an economic contraction, that means that labor's worth less because there's more labor out there. There's a lot of people. The unemployment's high. But what's more, even worse is, is the amount of people that are working. Forget the number of people who aren't working, the unemployment number, because they can mess with that all day long. But what they don't mess with is the number of people working. It's about 58% of adults are working. And that's a staggeringly scary number yeah you're getting you're getting pretty close to half of us not (laughs) at that point and then well the people who are working tend to be the people who pay the bills for the folks who aren't that tends to be how it is and that gets real scary economically and here's what i want to know because i started working at 12 years old i understand i was working under the table and i was getting paid in uh, store credit Um, i don't think i got started getting paid until 14 cash And, um, you know, what I did was I I worked at a comic book store. I understand it's not terribly hard labor or anything like that. But um, as, you know, time went by, my wages went up and up. And I think that that's uh, sort of the expectation of what you can uh, expect to have. But, you know, with this market contraction... You can't, uh, young people have it. It's a difficult time getting a job. So, if you can choose between a 25 year old who work for, um, you know, minimum wage or a 15 year old, who are you going to pick? The 25 year old probably has some ideas about uh, how to behave. Yeah. And, and in the election that, that just went down, there were a number of referendums on the ballots for, uh, for minimum wage hikes. And I think it was either two states and four cities or four states and two cities. I forget which one it was. That actually did vote for minimum wage increases, yeah. and it's one of these things. And and once I saw that, I have a I have an article on my website that's been very popular: minimum wage countering uh, leftist propaganda, which is they go through all of these crazy, ridiculous stunts to try to make this seem like a good idea. But as you point out, look if you're gonna if you're going to make minimum wage something that people aren't willing to pay their employees, well then guess what? They're not going to hire those people if it if it costs. If hiring a person costs more than a service is worth, then they will generally tend to not hire that person. They will shove those responsibilities off onto other people who are already making the money. When they do hire those people, they're not going to be happy about it. And you're creating a situation in this country where a dollar doesn't get you that far, and you're taxing people on top of that, and then you wonder why people are struggling economically, and then you just demand that their employers pay them more. And right. And, well, the expectation is that these businesses are always the, the evil ones, but the, you and I, the consumers, need to buy this stuff. And if you're, you know, the dollar menu, a lot of things on the dollar menu aren't a dollar anymore, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's not the dollar menu anymore. Now it's the value menu. Yeah, this is, it's dollar fifty menu and that sort of thing. And things are going up. And if you're, you know, if you're not willing to, to spend that for whatever reason, because people make lots of decisions as to why they're they're willing to, to spend money on something when they're not, that's where it all comes down to. 
And the other thing is, is that if you are, you know, starting to make those sort of decisions, if you're if you're deciding to buy from the dollar menu or the value menu instead of like eating real food, then your health is not going to improve, and then you're going to be on Obamacare and taking money out of that system, and oh, the vicious cycle just perpetuates itself. Let's go to Pugnacious Pete calling in from Long Beach. Good to be with you, Pete. Thanks so much for calling in. I look forward to this part of the show every week. Westboro Baptist, what? 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 Oh, yes, yeah. I, I, I shocked you with that statement. You know, I'm a Calvinist, and they're Calvinist, and I think that they're at least, at least people make fun of those guys, but at least they're they're out there uh, doing something, speaking against filth, you know? So you, what, wear oh. Calvin Klein or what? Uh, no, John Calvin, Reformers, Martin Luther, Wycliffe. You never okay, heard okay, Martin Luther, Luther, Luther rings a bell. I didn't even get the Calvinist thing. So Calvin, he's one of them. You, you've so, got to admit you must be in a really small you're, you're in a real small minority of people that support the uh, uh, the Westboro Baptist Church, right? Westboro Baptist, because, see, most people are doing what's wrong. At least they're not afraid to stand up against corruption and say, you know what? It's wrong to be homosexual, and maybe that incurs judgment if the society likes it. I mean, Do you think it is? Do you think that soldiers are getting killed is. over in Iraq or Afghanistan or wherever, or Syria? I'm not sure where, because God is uh, meeting out judgment here for gay marriage or something? I think that that's, that's, not, that's not the only sin, but that's one of many sins that he used. He told you in the Bible in several places, he'll destroy you if you're wicked. Yeah, A lot of people died in World War I. I, well, a lot of people died in World War Two. I, I, a lot Pete, of people died in the Civil War. A lot of people died in all these rather, rather conflicts. Rather than try to hash out this particular issue, I just, I just wonder if you could sort of explain to me. I mean, what is it like? Because I mean, if we were talking about anything pertaining to sexuality or even religion, I would totally understand this call, and I, and I'd really love to have the chat with you. I wonder what it is that made you decide to call in and talk to us about homosexuality now we're talking about a completely different subject i mean he can do that it's free talk live i get it but it's every single call right like it's not he's obsessed with gay people it's not as if he's ever called in about something else and what i really like would like to try to understand is like do you look forward to this every night does he do this other nights or is this a wednesday night thing um let's just switch it and talk about minimum wage okay you want to know what i think about minimum wage okay i think it's a catch-22 a minimum wage should be 20 bucks because of inflation, but okay, you're right. Eco- economics, they don't want to hire people because, you know, I mean, it costs them more money. It's, it's supply and demand. But okay, what are we going to do? We, we need to the cut worst the worst of roots bro- both worlds with this guy. I mean, what, what do we do? I mean, what are we supposed to do? We'd ha- we, that won't fix the entire problem. Cutting off a branch or bandaging a branch won't fix 50 other things, you know? I mean, what do so, you think the solution is? What, I think the solution is to go back to Jesus Christ, beg for mercy, and treat your neighbor like you want yourself to be treated, and uh, do not exploit them because you get exploited. You, you know what goes around comes around. Galatians six seven. So how's that the, the, working out for you? Is, is excellent. I mean, it seems to me that you've definitely. I mean, you seem to, in your own mind, you seem to have turned to Jesus. How's that working out for you? Is your life improving? Absolutely. Every day it's getting better. You know? So then why it's, it's are you this miserable guy who calls into talk radio to scream about the bad behaviors of others on a regular basis? Why are you so unhappy? Who, who says I'm unhappy and miserable? I have constant joy. There's I no way that you're in, you're, there's no way that you have a good life and you do the things that you do, Pete. It's completely well, impossible. I, I a, you obsess. Every single Wednesday I'm in here, you call this show and start hollering about gay people. I can't imagine that this is the only show you do it to. You're not waiting for your opportunity to tell me how you feel about gays every week. So what is it that's going on in your life that's making you so upset that this is what makes you happy? I mean, are you happy at home or... And I'm joyful, but I'm not going to sit back like most people that are brainwashed do and say that evil is good and good's evil. Being homosexual, doing narcotics, abortion, a whole list of issues are wrong. The Bible says Thanks for the call, 855 free. Here's a special message for those of you who owe the IRS at least 10000 or more in back taxes. The IRS has special programs in place that could eliminate or reduce your tax debt by thousands of dollars. Call the tax helpline that has been set up to help you. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. Stop the wage garnishments, levies, and tax liens now.
Once you've qualified and enrolled, the IRS will stop all the collection activities against you. These unique programs have been allocated to help the economy and significantly reduce or eliminate your tax burden. The IRS is currently accepting reduced settlements and other favorable programs. You may qualify for substantial savings, so get the help you need. For free information and to see if you qualify, take down the number now for the Tax Representation Hotline. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. 800-691-6129. Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. For the realists, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should too. Find out what they know. Call us and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Free Talk Live. I spent eight and a half years of my life in prison, and I blame it squarely on the shoulders of Christianity and the stories that I was told. If somebody, if my parents, if my, if the people at the Christian school, if the people at church would have just explained morality to me as opposed to explaining heaven and hell as a reason for doing what was right and what was wrong, I think I would have understand. It's relatively easy. If you do the moral thing in life, your life is going to be better. You're going to sleep better at night. You're going to probably uh, you know, be much more prosperous. Right. You know, they and say crime doesn't things. pay. They and all those for a reason. happen uh, right here in this world. We don't have yes. to wait for an afterlife to experience the consequences of our actions, whether good or bad, you know. If I would have just been given the gift of morality instead of the gift of some silly, crazy story, I would never have gone to prison. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, 855-450-3733. You can call in... Uh, talk about anything, including your obsessions on other people's sexual proclivities, if that's what uh, <laughs> floats your boat. I think we've got. A, I, I said during the break, I would love to get Pete on like a Stefan Molyneux call. <laughs> I think that would just be so great, man. For yeah. those of you who don't know who Stefan Molyneux is, you can uh, check out freedomainradio.com. He is uh, a premier voice in the Liberty community, and he's got some very clear ideas on what he thinks about just about everything yeah he would he would pry out of pete the most <laughs> horrific stories of child abuse right that he was just like mom you know locked him in a closet you know threw 
bricks at him when he <laughs> sneezed. I mean, whatever, whatever crazy lunacy that that guy went through when he was a kid is really affecting him today. And get some help, buddy. Get some help. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. Um, also, if you've got Bitcoins, get a car. New Age Auto Sales has late model used cars that, they're, that have been cared for from their rental fleet. Since New Age Auto Sales is selling their own well-maintained cars, uh, the auction fees and transport costs, well, they don't get passed on to you. Their cars are in great condition, and they're priced to move. They can ship anywhere in the world. So go to NewAgeAutoSales.com and see what they've got. Uh, there's, uh, they're looking to be the Bitcoin auto dealer. But obviously, if you see something you like and you don't have enough Bitcoin, they can help you there too. With Bitcoin, your money never needs to be exchanged into dollars. It's NewAgeAutoSales.com for late model, well-maintained cars shipped anywhere in the world for Bitcoin. Head on over to their website or give them a call and buy a car from the first Bitcoin auto dealership, NewAgeAutoSales.com. Now, when it, if somebody's buying a car of Bitcoin, I really don't have to get the telephone number, right? Like, they can just go to NewAgeAutoSales.com and look up the the. Uh, the, the website the, or the, yeah i the figure if you if you're using if you're like i'm going to make that kind of investment with bitcoin probably have internet access yeah, if right? you have bitcoin so, you must have internet access yeah so if you're going to go to newageautosales.com you know you just go there i mean if you wanted to call the guy up and read him your private key i guess you could do that but that just <laughs> sounds kind of ridiculous right i don't know whether they'd be willing to do that frankly <laughs> <laughs> that's a the private key is going to be pages and pages long of text <laughs> And then, but so I, and you know, right now Bitcoin's up too. So, I mean, you know, if you've been sitting on your Bitcoin for a little while, you know, I think it was, it was, it broke 400 bucks today. I think it sure was did. like 425 or something like that last I checked. And I was kind of enthusiastic about that. Somebody actually recently donated an entire Bitcoin to me completely anonymously. I have no idea who it was. And I was there so, you go. Thank, so grateful. And, uh, so then, I, and then, and then all of a sudden Bitcoin went up and I was like, oh, hey, I'm rich. I'm a happy miser. Let's go on to uh, Dan calling in from Arizona. Dan, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Hey, guys. Uh, well, Bitcoin's on my mind. Okay. What about it? I saw I saw Ian on the World Crypto Network today, and he's what inspired me to call in tonight. Oh, uh, yeah. I didn't even know he was on today. Yeah. Obviously, he's not there, so I decided, well, I'll throw this question to you guys to uh, kind of interject something positive into the to the show today. What, we could use some positivity about? after the last caller. Yeah, it's it's hard to do a show about liberty and talk about things that are positive. <laughs> That's true. Well, anyway, well, uh, just just for um, a goof, what what do you guys think uh, shot the price of Bitcoin up today? Have any ideas? I was trying to speculate about this before the show. I'm I'm really not sure. I mean, the the price the when the price of bitcoin sort of tanked i mean it was up around i don't know you know six hundred dollars or something like that a few months ago and it started going down slowly and then it tanked all the way below 400 it tanked below 300 for a little while that was sort of set off by like margin calls and that sort of thing as i understood it it sort of like went below a certain point and then there was a massive sell-off and i guess people waited for it to stabilize and now it seems to me that just people start to be happening to buy back in i don't know of any particular market fluctuation that sort of caused it because i mean the dollar's pretty strong right now i mean that's why your gas prices are going down that's why your silver and your gold are going down and that sort of thing but bitcoin seems to be going back up and the only thing i can speculate is that you know people saw it bottom out and now they're looking to get back into it every bit of bitcoin news that i've seen or nearly every bit of bitcoin news that i've seen is positive so I have a difficult time ascribing, uh, I mean, I've seen positive Bitcoin news with Bitcoins going down, and I have a difficult time ascribing what, uh, you know, b b to, to anything, because I, at this point, I've become so cynical that the positive news isn't necessarily going to affect the Bitcoin price uh, positively that I just can't answer. Do you have a guess? Uh, actually, no, I don't. Okay. <laughs> when you talk about positive news about Bitcoin, like it drives me a little crazy, right? Because, you know, so many of the people, everybody who's talking about Bitcoin has Bitcoin, right? And everything they say about it is an effort to drive up the value of their asset. 
I guess. You know? It's 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 it borders on pump and dump, even if they're not planning on dumping it, right? And it just drives me crazy that everybody's like, "Oh, well, Bitcoin is tanking, which is great because that means it's on sale and you can buy more." Oh, Bitcoin is going up, which is great because <laughs> I feel like I have lots of money. There's just there's no such thing as bad news about Bitcoin <laughs> for these shameless self promoters of their own assets. Thanks for the call, Dan. Um, so I made a telephone call today. A uh, the the school that my um, son was previously on um, was previously going to the he was going to kindergarten at the Waldorf school locally, and they have this deal with the local grocer where they uh, get grocery cards. Well, I can't get a grocery store uh, card through one of these card payment things. You know, you know where you can buy an, an on you can buy a card where you can you know purchased food gift yeah gift card that's the term i'm trying to come up with um it's a gift card you can purchase that but you can't do it through one of these e-gifter or uh, gift.com or whatever they might be gyft.com you can't do hannaford's which is the one that i go to locally and i don't think there's any of them that we go to locally except maybe uh, target uh which is hardly a grocery store (laughs) so we don't get like market basket price shop or market 32 as these lunatics are changing their name to apparently Uh, whatever and or any of the other major ones except for uh whole foods and we don't have a whole foods locally so i called the office to say oh and they, they sent me an email saying we're doing this again this is our fundraiser and i don't know what kind of deal they get but they sell these uh cards and i called them and i said look the first thing, um, you know, talk to the lady who sent out the email. I mean, I, there's only a few people in the office there. Talk to the lady who sent out the email. She so signed it. And I said, do you know what Bitcoin is? And she said, yes. So that was the first question I asked. Right. And to me, that's pretty positive news. Yeah. So you can call the local Waldorf school and talk to the functionary in the uh, Waldorf school about Bitcoin. And she's heard about it. Right. So um, supposedly they're going to help me out and see whether I can buy these cards with uh, Bitcoin. But, you know, I'd love to help them. Yeah. So the fact that they know about it, people are beginning to find out more and more as charities take it, as uh, businesses take it. I think you're going to especially I think really what's going to make the difference is is if businesses give that three percent or whatever back to you that they are saving in uh, transaction fees. Absolutely. Yeah. Then that will be a real kicker for. Yeah, uh, I mean, they've got to figure out a way to hedge their bets as this thing fluctuates all over the place like a lunatic. But, uh, you know, I I do think that you will see more people pick it up. And, you know, there's a certain amount of uh, people have wildly differing ideas on what Bitcoin is. They're like, that's drug money or blood money, blah, blah, blah. Or they actually like realize it's a, you know, economically sound idea. But more and more people to the point, it's hard to find somebody who hasn't heard of Bitcoin. What do you think? Positive or negative future for Bitcoin? Love to hear either side. 855-450-3733. That's 855-450-FREE on Free Talk Live. This winter, next to water and food, you need a safe, storable fuel supply for your preparedness needs. Spare fuel is the answer. Unlike gasoline, spare fuel can be safely stored with your other supplies for many years and works in any gas-powered vehicle or backup generator. With the bitterly cold temperatures predicted for this winter, now is the best time to stock up on spare fuel. So go to GetSpareFuel.com. That's GetSpareFuel.com. GetSpareFuel.com. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Listen, you've heard the commercials before. Whether you owe 15000 or $15 million in tax debt to the IRS or state, we can help. On a never-ending payment plan? Penalties and interest killing you? Missing tax returns? Being garnished or levied? Not a problem. If you qualify, we can remove levies and garnishments within days or even hours of hiring our firm. If you've been summonsed, or even worse, receiving tax warrants in the mail, call right now. Are you a business owner with back payroll taxes? Is the IRS or state threatening to close your business you've worked so hard to build? Protect yourself and your business. Even if you've tried in the past, new guidelines could potentially qualify you today. So what are you waiting for? We can take that tax monkey off your back. 
Call the Tax Monkey now. 800-281-6030. 800-281-6030. 800-281-6030. That's 800-281-6030. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My Magic Mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to MyMagicMud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, MyMagicMud.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. Free Talk Live, 855-450, free. That's 855-450-3733. Guest starring Mark. And Christopher Cantwell. That's right. Ian is uh, it's off, it's off tonight, so you got us. 855-450-3733, or you can use lrn.fm on Skype. That's our username, 855 4 50 free. You can get a free pound of coffee by going to coffee.freetalklive.com. Free? Free! It's a free pound. And it's also shade grown, 100% organic, and top 1% grade Arabica beans. It's high end, delicious coffee. It's worth taking the time to go there, sign up for the subscription. And it is a subscription. You can cancel it at any time. You want your free pound and go? Fine, not a problem. You can do that at coffee.freetalklive.com. But if you continue to get your coffee through there, uh, coffee.freetalklive.com, you'll help us help people around the world through kiva.org. We are able to give some of the profits back. Uh, Buzzbox Coffee allows us to do that. They send us a check, and we can then make microloans to people through kiva.org. And we've managed to help a bunch of people, and we're going to continue to help folks. So coffee.freetalklive.com. If you want to help us for every person that signs up, we're able to you know, give a little more. Um, actually, I think it's for every 10 people that sign up, we're able to give another micro loan. So there you go. 855-450 free. Do you actually understand the whole shade grown thing? Yes. Because I don't get it. Like okay. I can't, I can't grow corn in the shade. And like, <laughs> you know, corn is something that I, you know, people grow in New York, which isn't the warmest of climates. I think that coffee is a thing that you have to grow in like the really warm climates down like by the friggin' equator. Yep. And then they're like, okay, let's take this plant that'll only grow in the hot sun, and then we'll grow it in the shade. Well, um, you know that uh, certainly um, in the hot sun, you have, uh, you know, these forest canopies. Um, you have these areas where uh, plants have grown up. Now, plants, some plants are, uh, you know, light shade, heavy shade. Some are full sun. 
Corn is definitely a full sun crop, and it needs a lot of water, and it's a lot of maintenance. Whereas coffee is a perennial that grows up in the shade in forests, and um, you know it's much more spread out. It's not the kind of plantation thing. They had to breed robusto breed coffee um, to be able to make these plantations the way they did. Well, shade grown grows in the forest canopy in a sustainable fashion the way that it always has. And so that way you're not tearing up uh, these these forests, which keep the soil in, and then the soil rushes into the sea. And then, oh. you know, so the coffee, the places that grow coffee, oftentimes are only good for growing coffee for a few, a, a decade or two because their soil washes away because they've taken all the forest away. So this way it keeps the, it, it's better for your stomach because it doesn't have the acid, you know, it's not as acidic as uh, regular coffee. It's good for the songbirds, by the way, who live in these forest canopies. And um, <laughs> sure, it keeps it's good for the environment. Growing. And these people are able to make, uh, you know, generational lifestyle changes when they, um, you know, they become coffee farmers rather than just sort of taking what they can get for a couple of ge- uh, a couple of decades and then, you know, it's back to poverty. But if it's if they're getting it from under the canopy, then are they actually coffee farmers or is it like coffee safari? Are they like <laughs> going out and... 855 450 free. You can go to coffee.freetalklive.com and get your free pound. Let's go on. Oh, by the way, it, it turns out uh, record volume from China um, in, in Bitcoin today. And so that could be a reason for the spike in Bitcoin prices. It was the Chinese. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, you don't know either. So uh, we probably shouldn't speculate too thoroughly. But I'm I going- wonder if there's a caller who can come in and tell us what Japan has to do with this. <laughs> I wonder if there is. <laughs> um, the, from the Economic Collapse blog at economicscollapseblog.com, the 24 reasons why millennials are screaming mad at our unfair economy. Going on, I think we're at uh, number seven here. Since Barack Obama, we had to blame it on him somehow. Since Barack Obama has been in the White House, close to 40% of all 27-year-olds have uh, spent uh, of 20, just 27 year olds interesting at least some time uh, at some point unemployed so a lot of people unemployed i think is uh, what the claim here is and it tends to affect more thoroughly people who are younger than people who are older it's just interesting that they were so specific i'm wondering what the they got another one of 27 year olds since barack obama has been in office like yeah. I, okay. All right. And here's another one with the 27 year olds. It must they must have gotten this from some uh, the same website. Only about one out of every five 27 year olds owns a home at this point, and is an astounding 80 percent of all 27 year olds are paying off debt. So, 20 percent of 27 year olds do not have debt. That's a really lucky 20 percent, I'd say. Um, Th- those are the like ones said, probably too poor to have a loan. Yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe they're not so lucky when you put it that way. When they're like. It's kind of- it's kind of interesting, um, you know. Most of, a good portion of my adult life, I've had more debt than I've had money to, to than assets. Yeah. So I'm actually in the negative. But though people that have no money will be on the street asking me for money, but I have less money than they do, sort of on paper. Right, right, right. Just because I have access to some money today, um, it's it's kind of a it's, it's a strange situation. Yeah, and and I have, uh, I mean, I have a a little bit of debt i really don't have much i sort of got out of the debt game you yeah, know not much good for it and uh you know i don't have much money either so it's kind of it works out that way <laughs> now if you're gonna go in business i think that for business it might be worth uh, getting into debt you should probably talk to a few people see what they think about your business idea but to me that's the best reason to, to go into debt the rest of it you know a thousand dollar car is probably going to do most of the things that a thirty thousand dollar car is going to do. Yeah, I have a I have a two thousand dollar car myself, and I'm really quite happy with it. And I am not at all anxious to go buy a depreciating asset uh, that is not going to uh, do anything that my two thousand dollar asset. Right. Is if you buy a two thousand dollar car and it depreciates twenty five percent, you have a fifteen hundred dollar car. If you buy a a thirty thousand dollar car and it depreciates twenty five percent. You have a twenty two thousand five hundred or something like that. Uh, I mean, that's a huge hit. Yeah. And this is that's a game for rich people, not a game for poor people. Yeah. And if it wasn't for that effing 
cash for clunkers program, then, you know, then we'd have a great deal many more used cars out there that would be, uh, you know, even making that used car market even better. But That's you know, absolutely true. To go melt a bunch of stuff over in China. But, of course, that's an old program, and I shouldn't be bringing it up. Well, it's important to, for people to look at supply and demand and understand why things are the way they are today. Cars cost more today. Used cars cost more today because the supply of them has been diminished by a government program that was promoted by the sitting president, whether you like it or not. Um, you know, I don't want to blame everything on Barack Obama. I think there's plenty of blame to go around, Republican or Democrat. But I'd say that most people would claim that the cash for clunkers was a Democrat program and certainly was a Keynesian economic program um, from its uh, inception. I'm I'm really quite comfortable blaming Democrats for everything right now. I don't want to uh, say that Republicans are going to be any better, but I'm really tempted to feel that way. Like, I did – I got excited about the election results, if I'm honest with you. I mean, I was watching uh, – I went down to New York for election day. I did not vote. Uh, that would have been, uh, I think that would have been illegal for me to do, not that I had any interest in doing it. But a couple of my friends were running for office in New York. Gigi Bowman was running for New York State Senate, and Michael McDermott was running for governor. And we went down to, like, watch the election results. And so they, they went to this bar to have their little, you know, victory party, their libertarian party. They had no <laughs> chance of winning, but, you know, that's what we called it. At least you get to have a sandwich. Right. Uh, I did not get to have a sandwich. I'm on a low-carb diet. Thank you very much. I was, I was finger there, food? and I couldn't have any finger food, and I couldn't drink alcohol, and I felt like a lunatic, and I just had to get out of there after a little while. But in any case, then they didn't even have, like, they, they realized that they scheduled this thing they, that where they didn't have the local news. They had satellite television, so he couldn't watch the local election That's results. hilarious. And we ended up um, watching Fox News, you know, and just seeing. And Fox News had like the the ticker of how many uh, seats the Republicans had gained in the Senate, and you know, it was like this big party when they gained, you know, control of the Senate. And I was like, at the Libertarian event. Well, not our not our people weren't necessarily celebrating that, but Fox News certainly was. I but see. but I threw I did a little you know happy dance when I found out too because I was like okay great those Democrats we defeated them duh it's really hard not to get sucked into that sometimes man eight five five four five zero three seven three three free talk live eight fifty five four fifty free are you searching for your soulmate someone you can trust who will never betray you or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. Are you predictable? When was the last time you surprised someone with something totally unexpected? At ProFlowers, we think predictability is boring. So we're making it easy for you to be unpredictable by offering our best-selling 100 colorful blooms for just $19.99. Plus, we're giving away a free glass vase with every order. But hurry, because this incredible deal ends this Friday. Go to ProFlowers.com, click on the blue radio microphone in the upper right corner, and enter the secret code 0700. That's ProFlowers.com, secret code 0700. Don't complain about your cable bill going up and up and up. Do something about it. Grab a pencil and jot down this special number, 1-855-905-MY-TV. The more cable TV rates go up, the better digital satellite TV looks. Say goodbye to the cable guy. And get more of your favorite channels in 100% digital quality for less money. Call 1-855-905-MY-TV. Sign up for packages starting as low as $19.99, and there's no equipment to buy. You get free HD TV upgrade, a free DVR upgrade, and free professional installation. Installation. You control what you watch when you watch it. Record your favorite shows, pause and rewind live TV, even skip the commercials. Watch local channels too. At just $19.99, what are you waiting for? Pull out your major credit or debit card. Call 1 855 905 MyTV. 1 855 905 MyTV. Say goodbye to the cable guy. Cut costs and get more. 1 855 905 MyTV. 1 855 905 MyTV. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. 
from there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Nothing compares to a good cup of coffee. But if you're getting your coffee from the store, you're likely not getting a good cup of coffee. Free Talk Live's teamed up with BuzzBox to bring you a free pound of the best of the best coffee, shade-grown, organic, top 1% grade Arabica. But what's different is that for every 10 people that get coffee through our link, coffee.freetalklive.com, we can give another micro loan through Kiva. When the loan's paid, we lend the money again. Help others, one cup at a time, coffee.freetalklive.com. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can call in and talk about whatever is on your mind here on Free Talk Live. It's Mark with you. And Cantwell. 855-450-3733. Also, lrn.fm on Skype. That's our username. We've been all over the uh, board here this evening. Yeah, we're talking about Republicans and homosexuals and gmo foods and net neutrality and uh reasons millennials are uh which which we determined by the way that i'm actually part of right that that, that you're you're a cusper i would say say if i uh, had to come to take a hard line i'd say you're the very edge of gen x i'm it's my birthday today so i'm congratulations gonna be, i'm gonna be i'm gonna be a millennial today <laughs> and as it suits me i'll be gen x another day Someone should give you a gift for surviving for another year. Um, you can go get archives of Free Talk Live going back for more than a decade for free at archives.freetalklive.com. The rest of those shows, they charge you for them. Not Free Talk Live, we give our archives away. Uh, just go to archives.freetalklive.com. If you want the last seven days, they're right there on the front page. Anything after that, archives.freetalklive.com. So we're reading the 24 reasons why millennials are screaming mad and an, our unfair economy, and we're kind of poking along through them here. The this economy's is, not fair, man. <laughs> the economy, well, I suppose it's uh, the free market's fairer than many other so, so forms of uh, sort of monetary distribution. I have no sympathy for these scumbags. Do you understand me? I really, I'm, 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 I'm to a point, and like, look, I'm, we're reading about these things, and that they're put in these really bad economic positions, right? And they're like, they're 27, and they're, they're in debt and they don't have houses and they live with their moms and stuff like that but you know what i think it's largely their fault i i really don't have a great deal of sympathy for I them don't. if you go and you talk to these little entitled little brats they think that the government is supposed to solve all of their problems well you know what you moron you're getting exactly what you demanded I think that uh, if you expect the government to solve problems for you, you're going to be, uh, you know, you're upset. going to find yourself with a but lot of problems to solve, kid. The government does solve problems for people. You just need to understand for whom it solves, and it <laughs> solves problems for the rich and the powerful. 
And if you're not one of those, it's probably not going to solve any problems for you because it is a rigged system. Yeah, and when we're talking about the rich, you liberal morons, it's it's not people who make $250,000 a year. We're talking about the military-industrial complex and Nancy Pelosi and... I don't know who else, the, 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 the ultra-wealthy who gain all the benefits from the state. Indeed. Big Pharma. Folks folks like that. And Monsanto. You don't, you don't actually even have to be super wealthy to be getting uh, you know, the, the, the government sort of twisted in your direction. But in a lot of cases, you end up that way. Yeah. You well, know. If, you, if you get the government twisted in your direction, if you get the government uh, doing what you need it to do, then you tend to uh, – you gain some economic benefits from that. When the central economic planner favors you, you know – you get ahead a little bit when the central economic planner doesn't look at you as anything other but a minus sign on his ledger sheet. Well, then you tend to get screwed over. Let's go on with the list here. Um, number nine in 2013, the ratio of what men in the 18 to 29 year old age bracket were earning compared to what the general population was earning reached an all time low. So in 2013, the ratio of what men in the 29, 18 to 29 year old bracket compared to the rest of uh, you know America was that ratio reached an all time low. So those people. The economic uh, downturn affected men disproportionate to women. It affected minorities disproportionate to whites, and it, it affected young people disproportionate to old. So that's if if you're the, one of those, all of those three, you got screwed in the economic downturn of uh, 20, uh, 2007, The latter part, I don't even know what to call it, the Great Recession. Yeah, I mean, it's, if if you are not at the uh, at the top of the economic food chain, and the economic food chain takes a dive, you're uh, you're diving with the with the rest of it. You know, and, the problem with calling it the econo- the the Great Recession is is that you assume that the I didn't go- think it was so great. The, the, the well, it, you assume that the government's numbers are accurate. And I don't believe them for a second when they talk about the consumer price index and all these things. Oh, yeah. That's it's re- just a bunch of hooey. So if they say that a recession is more than two, uh, you know, it's two. It's a two or more quarters of negative economic growth. Uh, negative economic growth. Yeah. Right. So it was almost a depression, but it wasn't a depression. Well, they were never going to let it be called a depression. They're going to right. pencil whip those numbers, pencil whip the, the bejesus out of those numbers, and and uh, you're not you're not going to get to see the, what the real thing oh, is. Oh yeah, they 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 cook the books like you wouldn't believe. Did you see the video? There was a there was a thing. Uh, I know Reason Magazine put it out. I don't know if anybody else was writing about it. I'm sure I'm sure they were. There was a video that came out of one of the architects of Obamacare. This guy, um, his name escapes me, but. He was he was one of the people who he said that they uh, they had to help the the CBO the Congressional Budget Office like cook the books so that the the funding of Obamacare didn't look like taxes yeah and and he said something to the effect of call it the stupidity of the American voter yeah we had to take advantage of these people but that's how I got the policy and and I love the policy and I mean it's <clears throat> yeah that's what. Uh- that's what they count on is for you not to pay enough attention. Yeah. You look at you look at uh, you know when they're trying to calculate infl- inflation and they're just like, oh well, we printed a whole bunch of money and inflation still happens to be really low. And I'm like, well, you have a really interesting way of calculating inflation, don't you? That <laughs> you increase the supply and the demand doesn't change. Going on back in the year 2000, 80 percent, eight zero percent of all men in their late 20s had a full time job. Today, only 65 percent do. If you don't have people of men in their late 20s working in your economy, you're in big trouble because this is the foundation of your career. If you're not working in your late 20s, you're not going to I mean, you're never going to reach a uh, your full earning potential throughout your life, likely. No, you're not. And the uh, I don't know. I mean, on the one hand, I'm going to say just the fact that they don't have full-time jobs is not in and of itself a negative thing, right? I nope. don't have a full-time job, you know, but I'm uh, I keep my head above water and hopefully will be doing better in the future as I focus on my career as a creative person, but uh, you know, but the implication there is clearly that these people don't have jobs and it's not because they're pursuing their passions, yeah. it's because they're screwed. And that's a situation that is not going to be improved by time alone. Well, um, one thing I would say is is that if you're uh, if you're unemployed right now and you're putting together your resume, 
unemployed is not the right term. You should have projects that you're working on at all time, and, oh, yeah. and your your resume should be full of things that you're working on. And that's it, to be. You shouldn't be unemployed. Um, I don't have a job. I work for Free Talk Live and have for years. Well, it's a job, but it's not a full time. You know, it's work. It's, it's not show up to my office at nine o'clock and do what I tell you, sleigh boy. I mean, it's not. That's you know, that's the the nine to five full time job bit, right? And I mean, uh, you know, some some people call that their slave world job. You know, and I mean, uh, you know, I'm all for employment. I don't think it's slavery. Of course, it's a wage slavery. That's the other thing that right. millennials well, scream about. Yeah, you have to have uh, wages to be happy. That doesn't make you a slave. Yeah, but that, you know, I I wonder if that's part of it, though. I mean, if they're if they're uh, you know looking at this as wage slavery, man. I don't want to be a wage slave, man. And you know, they're just not showing up to work. And that's not that's not a good thing. Don't get me wrong. But I wonder how much of that is economic circumstances. How much of them is just being a brat? Yeah, I wonder uh, in the same way. Number 11 here. In 2012, one study found that U.S. families that have a head of household that's under the age of 30, so this is a young household, um, have a poverty rate of 37%. So the chances are more than a third that uh, if you're you know, talking about a household with somebody under the, and that's somebody living away from home, um, under the age of uh, 30, that um, you know they're going to be under the poverty rate and likely receiving some kind of assistance. And what another. did we say that the other the other third was living with their parents? So you're either in poverty living with your parents or you're one third of this demographic, apparently. That's sick. Yeah, so right? that's... You're, you're, one third is living in poverty. The other third's living with your parents, which is basically being in poverty and just covering it up with somebody else's resources. Yep. Only a third of the entire generation or this particular uh, demographic is actually like has their head above water and is not completely screwed. I mean, do you think that this is going to bode well when these people start retiring and collecting Social Security? This is going to be a damn nightmare. What are your fears about the economy? Do you think it's coming back? Do you think millennials will be salvaged in this? 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Free Talk Live, 855-450-FREE. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. If Americans continue their reckless disregard of the U.S. Constitution, our freedoms and way of life may not continue. Original Intent, Spoiler, and Molan La Bay is a three-movie special that explains what we can do. From the director of Fiat Empire, this trio of movies features Ron Paul, Pat Buchanan, Edwin Vieira, and many others. On sale now at moviepubs.net. This is a mini-library you don't want to be without. Free speech is protected on the internet, right? Not always. Government agencies try to limit free speech and commerce on the net. Luckily, when they do, the Institute for Justice is there to defend your First Amendment right to free speech. IJ helped set the first federal precedent for internet free speech in 1999, and ever since has worked to prevent unconstitutional roadblocks in cyberspace. Visit our website today at ij.org. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. 
This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates, online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Wednesday, November 12, 2014. Gold is trading around $1,156, silver around $15.60, and Bitcoin around $384. Today's Bitcoin price brought to you by ExpressCoin, the fastest, most reliable way to buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin today at expresscoin.com. The Liberty Beat is sponsored in part by eFoods Direct, redefining the way you think about storable food. They've created a menu of food that's so good, so easy to make, you'll find yourself eating it every day, even though it has a shelf life of up to 25 years. eFoods Direct is offering 10% off to all Liberty Beat listeners. Just go to eFoodsDirect.com slash Liberty Beat or call 800-620-5520 and mention Liberty Beat for your savings today. In the news, new reports show that nearly 3,000 troops will be sent to Iraq to assist in training fighters to combat guerrilla warriors in Iraq. The Anbar province has been of particular concern to the United States military, who staged airfield operations there from the invasion to 2011. According to The Nation, the U.S. plans to train 5,000 rebel Syrian forces in Iraq to fight against al-Assad's government in Syria, a nation engulfed in war for over two years. Since the U.S. supposedly withdrew from Iraq at the end of 2011, there has remained over 17,000 U.S. military personnel in Iraq. The Electronic Frontier Foundation reports that at least one Internet service provider has been caught altering the functionality of an essential security protection used for email encryption. Researchers found that Cricket Wireless has been stripping a security flag from email traffic. By removing the flag, the ISPs are able to prevent successful email encryption, leaving users vulnerable to interception by third parties. Ride-sharing service Lyft has announced they will continue to operate illegally in Houston, Texas, until their departure on November 20th. The company also stated they would provide support and cover the costs of the citation should any of their drivers be ticketed by police. The city of Houston recently passed an ordinance that would require ride-sharing companies to undergo fingerprint scanning extensive background checks, and other procedures that Lyft says are expensive and time-consuming. The company also stated they would be focusing their efforts on ride-sharing friendly cities like Austin and Washington, D.C. The Liberty Beat is made possible by Central Texas Gunworks, your online source for firearms, firearm accessories, and ammunition. They take major credit cards and now accept Bitcoin. Visit them online at shop.centraltexasgunworks.com. Support also comes from Marjorie Wildcraft's Grow Your Own Groceries, homegrown food on every table. That's growyourowngroceries.org. This is the Liberty Beat for Wednesday, November 12th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com and like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash thelibertybeat. We told you yesterday that a family of four has embarked on a three-week Bitcoin-only road trip over the Thanksgiving holiday. With the unconventional tour to take the Blush family from Texas to California, Nevada, Colorado, and Missouri. This will be the second Bitcoin only road trip for the family this year. Last June, Catherine Blush, her husband John Bush, and their two children traveled over 4,400 miles using only Bitcoin. However, Blush, creator of the Bitmom.com, says some things have changed over the past six months, creating room for Bitcoin entrepreneurs. A lot has actually changed since our last trip. We had to get creative when we were planning gasoline for this trip because the company we used last time is actually no longer active. There's really, I think, a lot of potential in this space for new startups, particularly helping people to get gasoline for Bitcoin. You can follow the Blush family's journey at uncoinventional.com. According to KXAN News, the Austin, Texas Police Department recently sent out a request for information to several companies about buying body cameras for officers. The technology commander claims the department could anticipate a force armed with body cameras by the year 2016. While only about 12 officers currently supply and use their own personal body cameras during duty, there are plans to use additional cameras on auxiliary personnel like canine officers, SWAT agents, and warrant enforcers. Purchases of video equipment follow a national trend of increased police spending on documentary technology. The Liberty Beat is made possible by Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. This is the Liberty Beat for Wednesday, November 12, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. 
with job numbers near historic lows, Forbes magazine has released a list of tips for finding a job, all of which involve witnessing an employer murder someone. Forbes says despite the grim economy, employers are still hungry for talented workers who know how important it is to forget about whatever they think they saw or heard. So uh, me and a couple of friends were out smoking at the viaduct the other day, and uh, we saw this really rich guy in a Mercedes pull up in his car and drop a uh, nothing. Now I'm the Vice President of International Development. According to Goldman Sachs CEO Lloyd Blankfein, we had a great quarter and hired hundreds of new employees. I haven't done anything wrong and all my employees will tell you the same thing because that's the deal we had. But the article warns that stumbling onto a coke fueled CEO strangling a prostitute isn't a foolproof method for finding work because employers are just as likely to murder you as they are to hire you. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live, 855-450-3733. Final hour of the this live edition of Free Talk Live. It's Mark with you. And Cantwell. 855-450 free. You know, we call Free Talk Live live because we're live seven nights a week from 7p to 10p Eastern time. But we are a delayed broadcast, what they call in the business delayed broadcast, recorded on many radio stations throughout the country. If you have something you want to talk about and you're on one of those stations, it may be very confusing for you. You try to call in, it's 1 a.m., you're thinking they're live. They said they were live. You have to call in between 7 and 10 Eastern to 855-450 free, but you can do that and then hear yourself on the radio that evening, um, which is always exciting. If you do call in and you want to get some kind of recording from it, you just go to freetalklive.com. We have the last seven days where the sh excuse me, show's right there available to you. It's freetalklive.com. We've been talking about, uh, for the last hour or so, the situation here in the United States economically, especially for millennials. And it's kind of tough to be young, male, and not white in America as far as uh, the economics of these uh, situations go. And it, it isn't good for the future when you've got a generation of people who are jaded and cynical about their, their future. Yeah, it, it isn't. And you know what? Uh, being white, not like being such a hot thing lately either you know, they're, they're ruining that whole bit for us man. <laughs> that is that is a change in there's no doubt about that um let's go to brian and call in from austin brian you're on free talk live what's on your mind uh gentlemen it's a pleasure to speak with you pleasure to speak um, with you too sir to, thank you it, i just wanted to share uh, an absolutely amazing experience that i just had um I just listed an item for sale on a completely decentralized, uh, open and free market that's global to anybody that wants to, to look at it. And it, it just it felt just great. Which one is this? Uh, uh, you, 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 you all spoke about it uh, just a few nights ago. Open Bazaar and Free Market were, were on the show just a few nights ago. This yep. is Free Market, NXT Free Market. Free market. Yep. Um, yeah, it's up running right now. It works, um, and I just listed six silver dimes on it um, for a thousand next. Excellent. Uh, so NXT and it's just, it's, is it's a uh, real, one of these cryptocurrencies that you may have heard about on the news, and it is a little different than than Bitcoin. We talk about Bitcoin a lot on Free Talk Live, but to some extent, Bitcoin is kind of shorthand for cryptocurrencies generally. Yeah. Um, NXT is set up differently. It doesn't have. Um, I guess a lot of people have critiqued Bitcoin for its proof of work uh, situation because it, um, uh, it it might put too many too much power in the hands of too few. Whereas NXT is a proof of stake, and that means that uh, the people who possess the the um, crypto cryptographic monetary units get to make the decisions as to how it's uh, formulated. Is that about right? Uh, well, I don't know that they get to make the decisions, but they need they get to. Uh provide the computing power for the network I, I guess you could say okay um you, you know you could run a node with your nxt clients um or you can just forge with it um doesn't matter how much nxt you actually have uh and you don't need you know specialized hardware as in bitcoin um with 
the ASICs and the centralization that's going on now, where there's just a few, you know, big outfits in China and and elsewhere. I heard one just burned down. Yeah, uh, I saw that. Uh, James was talking about, about just watching about the hash rate the fall. The price that's going up right now. You know, less Bitcoin are being dumped on the market at the moment. Yep. Yeah, maybe I, I don't know. I don't know the answer. Anyway, anyhow, the, just the the fact that decentralization is here, it's working. And to to experience it right now, I just listed these items. It, it just feels great. You yep. know? It's, uh, I'm excited. It's really exciting. This could really <laughs> change the way the internet uh, functions. Uh, there's uh, this is the free market on the internet because the internet hasn't been free up to this point. Uh, there's still the but but Mark but Mark. Uh, Net neutrality is going to fix that. <laughs> no, it's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obama's going to save us on that one. You know, I've I've heard all the great news. So what what is that. he ta- is he talking about like Silk Road three or something? I mean, is it what is this uh, free no, market? No, he was talking. Well, they're you know, uh, they're they're just talking about this net net neutrality thing and, yep. and no, I, it up. So. What uh, Kane Wells asking is he doesn't know about this uh, NXT uh, market uh, place and what he's trying to ask. Free market. A, yeah, the free market. What it what it is and what it is is it's a decentralized market. So Silk Road is a website that's on the dark web that has a website place where and it has administrators and all that stuff. What the free market is is a program that is distributed across the internet on the people that use it on their computers and they're able to do business on it without their there's no head to the snake to cut off as it were it's just peer to peer it's essentially peer to peer is that right Brian peer to peer marketplace yeah yep That's and this is fascinating this is true with another one called open bazaar and i believe it's openbazaar.org and that is going to function with all cryptocurrencies. Obviously, the free market, NXT's free market, only functions with um, NXT, which is Nextcoin, the, what used to be called Nextcoin. And uh, I think it's a very interesting, uh, I think it's the most interesting of the cryptocurrencies that's available right now. I, I will have to do some further research into this one because it sounds like something I would love to comment intelligently on, and I'm just wholly incapable of doing. <laughs> well, it's it's all brand new technology, you know, so I don't know that anybody is an authority besides the the developers that are knee deep in all the code but well what are we going to do uh, without an authority i'm excited about the fact (laughs) i'm excited about the fact that it's it's here and you can use it now and and um the the implications are just uh, they're mind-boggling to see um all these systems change over to a decentralized kind of system where they they can't be taken down they can't be affected they you know they well i i don't like the whole can't be taken down thing somebody could make a virus i imagine that could go after this right you know sure just as they can in bitcoin and and everything else correct i don't know or the internet in general i mean you know somebody could take down the whole internet right i mean theoretically if there's some super brilliant Uber Not if we pass net there. neutrality, they can't. <laughs> Thanks <laughs> well, for the call, Brad. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Appreciate that. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Let's go on with our list of uh, 24 reasons that millennials are screaming mad at our unfair economy. Because they have to go on an open source peer-to-peer marketplace to actually trade. <laughs> that wouldn't uh, be terrible for them. I, I think that the internet is going to... Uh, well, the Internet can, uh, can level the playing field. Most people can create some kind of work for themselves on the Internet. Um, and there are places in the world where you can live for a lot less than you live in the United States. I think that as the uh, marketplace gets more global, you'll find Americans leaving, uh, you know, continuing to leave. The numbers of Americans growing that leave the United States in order to live a better life in other countries while they continue. Because what the United States has and really has in droves is is this is the place to make money. This is the, right. you know, the, the, the geographical area where money changes hands. And if you can tap into that while you don't live in it, then you can do pretty well for yourself. If you're living in, I've, I've just heard, you know, Mexico, Thailand, uh, Central America, South America, different places where you can live. And for the same amount of as money. As long as it's America. <laughs> I'm just naming off some things that I know. Um, but as long as you're, you know, for the same amount of money, you can have servants 
if that's what you want, you know, people that help you, you know, clean up, cook food, um, you know, whatever, it, or for you can live for a lot less and live like normal folks do, I guess. Yeah, you could either have a big house and servants in one of these places, or you could live here and be SOL. <laughs> Indeed. So let's go on with our list of uh, 24 reasons why millennials are upset. In 2012, one, excuse me, another study uh, re released back in 2011 discovered that the U.S. households led by someone 65 years of age or older are 47 times wealthier than households le led by somebody who's 35 years of age and younger. So basically, 65-year-olds um, are 47 times wealthier than 35-year-olds. It would almost make sense if it was like double... Right, because they had some more time to put it together, but 47 times? It yeah, doesn't it's sound a lot. like things are working out so well for guys my age. Did you know by age 50, half of all men have an enlarged prostate? This means more urges to urinate, longer bathroom trips, waking at night to urinate, or issues with sex. If this sounds familiar, call us now, because we're shipping free bottles of Super Beta Prostate to listeners of this station. Super Beta Prostate is a non-prescription formula guaranteed to reduce the symptoms of your enlarged prostate. It's yours free. Pay only shipping and handling. Just call 1-800-856-4195. In clinical trials, the ingredient in Super Beta Prostate was shown to reduce urges to urinate, improve bladder emptying, reduce waking at night to urinate, and improve quality of life. This Super Beta Prostate free offer is for listeners of this station, but it won't last. Don't wait. Just call 1-800-856-4195. That's 1-800-856-4195. Call 1-800-856-4195. On the average, Americans work between 45 to 50 years, hoping to build up enough wealth to retire and live out their golden years. Unfortunately, with taxation, the rising cost of food, energy, housing, and medical, many retirees are forced to live below the poverty line. Is this a flaw free enterprise, or is our monetary unit we call the Federal Reserve Note forcing us into perpetual debt, ensuring inflation and higher taxes? These questions and more can be answered by reading G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Congressman Ron Paul states it's what every American needs to know about central bank power, a gripping adventure into the secret world of international banking cartel. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I will give a silver dollar from the early 1900s to anyone who purchases this book. Call one 800 68 and order a copy today. It's critical that the public be made aware of the system. Call and order your copy today at 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. I recently signed up for one of these self-defense classes and brought along a camera crew to watch. Take a good look at this class instructor. Thank you very much. Boy, was he smooth. He tried to butter us up with flowery compliments like, good work, nice try. Yeah. Yeah. But don't worry, folks, I wasn't letting my guard down for one second. Maybe he wasn't planning to attack me at all, but he could potentially plan to attack me at some point, and that left only one option. Take him out first. This is him. This is the guy. My quarry approached, and when the moment was right, I struck. I knew he'd be able to counter my every move if I just did what he had taught me, so instead, I did exactly the opposite. I beat him with a baseball bat. I am Shelby Cross! Do not ever attack me! Now, folks, I acknowledge that this man may have never been a threat, but a potential threat is just as dangerous as a real one. I don't play games with my life, and neither should you, and that's it. This is the Onion News Network. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 
If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, 855-450-3733. That's 855-450-FREE. It's Mark with you. And Cantwell. And you can call in and talk about whatever is on your mind. That's what we do here on Free Talk Live. Um, the Skype username is lrn.fm. If you want to sound a little better than the regular telephone, but either one's fine by us. That's lrn.fm on Just Skype. Send us a contact request. We'll accept it, and you can call it any time. Yep, 855-450-FREE, Free Talk Live. And if you're looking to get some gold or silver, silver looks really good right now to me as far as pricing goes. I expect it to go up, but you know that's the word of a talk show host. Uh, you can uh, you can decide what's right for you one way or the other, but it looks like it's really good to me. And uh, I am actually in the process of purchasing some silver from Midas Resources, and you can do so too at gold.freetalklive.com or silver.freetalklive.com, whatever makes you happy. For those of you who want a telephone number, I'll give it to you. Get a pencil ready. But you can, they've got all kinds of coins and pieces there that you're able to get. Um, and, you know, they'll ship them to you. They've been in business a very long time. You're going to be happy. The number is, it's gold.freetalklive.com. The number is 877-857-9938. 877-857-9938. Gold.freetalklive.com. And... Uh, Can't well. We're going on here with this uh, list of the twenty-four reasons why millennials are spoiled brats, <laughs> screaming mad at the unfair economy. And apparently, number thirteen is half of all college graduates in America are still financially dependent on their parents when they have two, when they are two years out of college. Well, considering that they have forty-seven times more wealth than they do, it sort of seems to make sense at this point, I guess. Right? I, you know. I think that my mom uh, paid for stuff for me over time. Now I have a kind of a funny situation. I spent nine years in prison. Yeah, so it'll um, set you back a bit. Yeah, it'll set you back a bit. Uh, but I mean, my honest- excuse is not nearly as good as that either. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, you know, managing to make it on my own now, but I still ride on her AAA account. Um, you know, she's got me on there as another signer on the AAA account. Yeah. And, um, she pays it. I don't. So. I guess that this is probably happening to you know lesser or greater extent for everybody across the country, uh, but this is kind of shocking. Is half of all college graduates are still financially dependent on their parents when they're two years out of college? Number fourteen in nineteen ninety four, less than half of all college graduates left school with student loan debt. Today, in two thousand fourteen, twenty years later, it's over seventy percent. So. I'm surprised it's not closer to 80 or 90. I mean, it's, it seems to me like, you know, with, with with how expensive school was becoming, I mean, it just seems like an impossible thing for, for people to pay for coming out of, you know, you're coming from high school and then going into college, and it's this huge, massive expense unless your parents are paying for it for you. It just seems like a thing that you're going to have to, you know, either borrow money or get some kind of a scholarship, you know, college driving up the demand with it with trying to get everybody into college, whether they should be going to college or not. Right. I think that that's really what it comes down to is if the people going to college needed to go to college, and the best I can figure, that's uh, doctors, lawyers, I wish we could do without them completely, um, in- yeah. engineers, uh, college professors. I can't think of too many more, but I'm certain there's a few more people that just have to go to college. Yeah. A lot of people can educate themselves. Yeah, or go into a trade school or something like that. I mean, college is this huge, massive investment that occupies a whole lot of time for things that are have nothing to do with the job that you're going to go into. And, of course, the the idea of the, the central economic planners and all the fools who have been listening to them is everybody has to go to college, a higher education for everybody. Blah, 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 and it's just ruining everything. I wouldn't go to even to a trade school. What I would do is if uh, I would target the career I wanted, and if it's not the career I want for my life, it's at least the career I want right now, um, I would target that career, and I'd go get a job, the lowest level job, at whatever that is. So if you want to build houses, go 
pick up sticks at the construction site. It's probably not the best one right now, but, you know, whatever it is that you want to do, there is a functionary level um, of employment that 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 somebody in that business has and try to get that because you'll learn a lot on the job. And then if they want you to move up and you desperately need training, they're liable to pay for your training. Many companies do. And if they, I mean, they'll probably require you to work there for four years or something like that to sort of make your training worth it to them. But that I think is the best bet in most careers. I don't think it's going to work for, like I said, doctors, engineers, lawyers, and a variety of other folks. Yeah, I would say that that wouldn't even work in like IT in a lot of places. I mean, I you know I worked in a data. I mean, perhaps maybe you could go sweep the floors in some guy's repair shop or something like that. But I know you know I worked in a data center and uh, you know we wanted guys with like an A plus, you know, an A plus certification or yeah. something like that, or at least the training for an A plus certification or the equivalent experience. And so, you know, that's a thing that I mean, you could take a class for you know five hundred dollars instead of sinking twenty, thirty thousand dollars into a college education, and you get yourself into a pretty prosperous field. And I mean, most of my career up until the point that I said the heck with this and decided to become a media personality has been in you know IT, and uh, you know that's how I got into it. I I did college very briefly, and I was like, this ain't for me. I did trade school, and I got into IT and got a career in IT management. You know. 855 450 free. Let's go to Mike calling in from Oregon. Mike, how do you say the name of that uh, town? Hi, guys. Uh, Clackamas, Oregon. Okay, that's how it's spelled. Clackamas, Oregon. Got it. <laughs> so, um, how you doing, guys? Uh, so Hanging in it, bud. To, okay. Hi, Chris. So I just want to quickly comment on uh, something that you guys just mentioned about the millennials. Um, I used to work for the New Hampshire Liquor Commission for 13 years. And so you're the one. You're a drug I, dealer. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the one. Um, and I started out in Plymouth, which is a college town. And there's the a lot of people drunk there. there. What's that? There's a lot of people drunk there. Oh, yeah. Well, m more so like up in Lincoln and, and Bristol and all that. Plymouth, not so much. I mean, you'd have an occasional drunk college kid come in once in a while, but it was a very rare thing. Most of them are pretty good. But, um, I was there for eight and a half years before I went to another store. And I would take a little personal survey, and I would ask um, when the uh, alumni would come in, oh, hey, I haven't seen you here. How are you doing? I would ask them, are you actually using your college education? Most of them, I would say about 75 to 80% of them said, no, they're not. Um, about maybe 10% were unemployed, which that's understandable. But a lot of them were doing painting, landscaping, uh, some of them, you know, working for their parents. But very, very few of them were actually working using their college degree. And now all of a sudden they have all this debt. I mean, I'm sure you've heard the story before, but sure. you know, now they have all this debt, you know, built up and stuff. And it's like you could have taken that money and, you know, put it into say silver or gold and find something that you'd like to do more instead of, you know, this quote-unquote career path, which, I mean, some people, I mean, I granted, I did talk to some people, some alumni that were actually in their field of um, what they went to school for, but that was a very, very um, kind of harsh thing. Yep. It's, there are a lot of people that are not using their degrees. Thanks for the call, Mike. Appreciate that. And you really have to consider that. When you're looking at college, when you're encouraging young people, hey, go to college. Well, go to college is a great idea if you're going to college for something you need a college degree for. Right. It, 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 it's ridiculous. 855-450-3733. Tell us your college stories. 855-450-FREE. Are you ready to surrender your right to buy body armor? No joke. Congress is now trying to outlaw civilian body armor. And if House Bill H.R. 5344 becomes law, you can kiss your right to protect yourself against rifle bullets goodbye. Don't put off your body armor purchase any longer. Go now to InfidelBodyArmor.com. Thousands of military veterans trust their lives to Infidel Body Armor. You should too. Spelled I-N-F-I-D-E-L. Infidel Body Armor. Just won't quit. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX 
That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Don't worry about things you can't control. Isn't that what they always say? But it's about impossible to avoid worrying about what's going on these days. The government has used the war on guns, the war on drugs, and the war on terrorism to tear our Bill of Rights to shreds. But you can't fight back. The Tenth Amendment Center has proven it, racking up major victories. For example, when the U.S. government claimed authority in the NDAA to have the military kidnap and detain Americans without trial, the nullifiers got a law passed in California, declaring the state's refusal to ever participate in any such thing. Their latest project is offnow.org, nullifying the National Security Agency. They've already gotten model legislation introduced in California, Arizona, Oklahoma, Missouri, and Kansas, meant to limit the power of the NSA to spy on Americans in those states. We'd be fools to wait around for the U.S. Congress or courts to roll back Big Brother. Our best chance is nullification and interposition on the state level. Go to offnow.org, print out that model legislation, and get to work nullifying the NSA. The hero Edward Snowden has risked everything to give us this chance. Let's take it. Offnow.org. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. 855 free That's 855-450-3733. You can call in and talk about whatever's on your mind here on the this live edition of Free Talk Live with Mark. And Christopher Cantwell, anarchist, atheist, expletive. <laughs> 855 450 When in doubt, leave it out. I messed that up so bad. When in doubt, leave it out, right, guys? <laughs> you left it out. That's CC Airwaves. That's the old uh, rules from Clear Channel. And, uh, you know, they're not terrible here on talk radio as far as uh, as rules to, to live by because even though the there's the seven dirty words, which are actually six, and um, I, from what I can tell, only about uh, four of them are you actually not allowed to say on the air. Uh, talk radio, it's a different beast than morning <laughs> yucker do talk, um, you know, <laughs> so, uh, me, you know, y- you gotta be careful of exactly how prurient one's conversation is. So if you're looking, if you value your online privacy, you need ProXPN. And what is ProXPN? It's a global virtual private network that allows all of your online data to be encrypted. Your internet, internet service pri- provider is likely saving all of your surfing hin- history. And how does that make you feel? With ProXPN, everything you do online is available for review. Um, 
everything you do online is available for review. What is that without? That, that, excuse me. I was like, think that, that seems very strange. Without ProXPN. I'm just reading new copy here. Simply download the app for Windows, Mac, iOS. They even have something for Linux, um, and it, it's going to prevent that prying and spying. One account works for all your devices simultaneously. No need to have a separate account for each device. Just go to proxpn.com slash FTL. Use promo code FTL50, and you'll get 50% off of an annual account. That's like 5 bucks a month. Though, um, and FTL 50 will get you the savings for the lifetime of the account, no matter which premium account you go with. So that's a long, I mean, it's not just for one year or three months or whatever. It's for the lifetime of the account. Use FTL uh, code uh, FTL BTC and pay with Bitcoin and you'll get 62% off uh, of an manual account. So this is a great deal. Premium account will give you unlimited bandwidth with servers all over the world to access the ability to privately torrent and get past regionally blocked websites. It's important. ProXPN, they don't keep records of your online habits at all. You get it all, um, all of that with a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. So you just try it out. Go to ProXPN.com slash FTL. Use coupon code FTL50 or FTLBTC and get a great discount on privacy that's priceless. The advertising aside, that is a crazy deal. <laughs> I'm just pointing it out as I listen to it every time I hear it. I'm yep. like, wow, that really is good. Indeed it is. Let's go to Adam, who I... Couldn't find out what he wanted to talk about. Adam, what's on what's on your mind? Hey, what's up? Can you guys hear me? Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, I'm I'm currently a college student down here on the other side of the, the Berlin Wall. And sorry Mass. to hear that, pal. I hope you've yep. signed up for the Free State Project. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm signed up. I'm planning on moving up there within a year or so. All right. Uh, I'm on board with the whole Liberty Movement. Been like a big Ron Paul guy since years back. Um, but uh. I have a unique situation where I'm currently going to college for geology and chemistry, which a lot of people will say is like a smart decision versus a lot of the other stuff. Okay. But uh, I'm a veteran as well, <clears throat> and I, f I feel like when, I, when I'm finished, if I, if I look for the best job I could find, uh, it's going to be more based on my military experience more than anything I'm going to learn in college right now. Really? But I – because my background was uh, nuclear engineering and electrical engineering. Uh-huh. But um, I'm currently like, I feel that when I get out, uh, I'm going to have a job that has nothing to do with, with what I'm going to college now. And my main reason that You'll I be in good to, company. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, my main reason for going to college is I kind of wanted to enjoy the, the rest of my late 20s that uh, since I joined right out of high school. And uh, I'm just kind of on the fence right now whether or not I should finish it up because I only have, I don't have that much time left, but going through all the bureaucracy and all the holdups and all the mistakes that the financial aid department make, it's it's really like kind of thrown me down into poverty and it's taking a big hit on my dignity. And I'm really thinking about just walking away from it and getting a job, which I know I can get because a lot of my friends are getting awesome jobs. And it's just a, a toss up between like my family being disappointed in me for not finishing it versus the harsh reality of like paying bills. Well, I'd be looking at those jobs and what they're paying, and uh, then you can start looking at uh, finishing up uh, with, you know, credit, you know, after school credits or whatever, you know, some kind of online uh, credits to, to finish up. That's if you want to finish up, you can finish up over time. You don't need to stay in university to do it. Um, I would be looking at those jobs and what they what they were paying, um, whether it was worth it to go. I had a friend who left one half of a credit one class short of finishing her uh, you know degree and just decided she it wasn't worth it to her um you know she's doing fine now i can't tell you what she th wishes she had done or what she w doesn't wish she'd done but things are okay but i, I mean that's it seems like a it, it seems like awfully close to the end to stop. I can't remember exactly how many yeah, credits that's it about, was. That's the boat I'm in. I'm, I'm like one and a half semesters away from finishing. and Pretty much everyone and all my friends and family, they're like, oh, just stick it out and finish it up. But it's like... Well, I'd finish just, the semester I was in, that's for sure. <laughs> well, yeah. But, I mean, it's just, it's just to the point where, like, my credit's really taking a hard hit. And financial aid department, they're, like, losing my forms and calling me a liar, saying I never turned them in because I didn't get proof that I gave it to them. And I'm like, hey... I've been going for like ten consecutive semesters, even through the even through the summer, just because you know the GI Bill gives you a monthly stipend to pay your bills and stuff, and it's hard to get a job over the summer where you're just like, oh, I'm 
I'm going to be leaving here soon. And yep. I don't know. I, I, I guess I just feel like my, my value is worth a lot more. And it's just tough coming out of the military, you know, being paid a lot and then just taking the hard hit of being a impoverished college student. I'm just, I, it's just a really hard decision for me to make right it, now. It, it and, sounds to me, I mean, what you just described to me was a situation where you went to college specifically because you wanted to enjoy your 20s. And it doesn't seem to be panning out so well. You know, it sounds yeah, to me exactly. like you're not happy at all and you're spending a whole bunch of money. So, I mean, it would seem to me that, you know, in a worst case scenario, you leave college, you're unhappy, and you make a bunch of money instead of spending money. In the best case scenario, you leave college, you make money, and you're happy. Right now, you're unhappy and you're losing money. This doesn't seem like difficult math, pal. Indeed. Adam, thanks for the call. 855 450 Three three. That's eight fifty five four fifty free, um, or you can call in like Adam did on Skype. LRN dot FM. It's amazing how much money people will pay to be miserable. I don't get it. Um. Yeah. I mean, you know, I don't. I don't know how to describe it either. But um, you know, it's like misery should be cheap. Like being unhappy <laughs> should not be expensive. You know what I mean? Like if I like I could do bad without paying a whole lot of money for it. Yeah, I got you. All right, let's go to Chris calling in on Skype. I'm in right, right here. By the way, if you're calling in uh, on Skype, um, I I apologize because I can only take one at a time. I don't know how to work this thing as well as Ian does, so my apologies. Chris, you're on Free Talk Live. I sure am. <laughs> hi, Mark. Hi, Chris. Oh, hey. Um, hi, I was calling because I was wondering if uh, you guys had heard about the uh, European space probe that just uh, landed on a comet. Yeah, I heard about that. I saw it trending on Twitter that we can land on a comet, but we can't. That was the hashtag that was trending. And I said, we can land on a comet, but we can't figure out that free markets solve problems better than government force. So I did hear about this. They are actually talking about it on NPR the other day when I was on my way out to Concord. They were talking about they were going to land a spacecraft on this comet that was orbiting the sun. And to do it, they had to put harpoons in the thing. And it seemed like a... A very expensive project, and I wasn't entirely sure what the point of the whole thing was. Maybe you could tell me. Well, I think they were planning on studying the comet and learning what it's made of and, and so on. I so, learned that in uh, in science class in uh, elementary school. It's ice and dust. Well, sure, but I think you know a little Aren't bit more comets about comets like it on fire? No, com comets are not on fire. Their tails always facing away from the sun, too. Always away from sure. the sun, even if they're not going in the other direction? Chris, you got something else? Uh, no, that's it. I just think it's a really cool gizmo. Uh, sure, it's funded by the government. But I think yeah. it's a horrible waste of money. <laughs> Thanks for the call, Chris. <laughs> you got to find out about these things somehow, but, you know, I get it. Hey, let's 855. Let's stuff into outer space and cling to comets. Find out what they're made of. Have you thought about owning gold? There are lots of reasons to own precious metals. A hedge against inflation. When the dollar tanks, metals go up. A barter currency. You can disempower the Fed by using real money. And no one knows the future. In an economic collapse, metals are likely to be a currency. Do as I've done for years. Buy your gold and silver and precious metals from Midas Resources through gold.freetalklive.com. That's gold.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. With autumn in the air, it's time to think about getting ready for winter. And it's time to save at HerbalHealer.com. You'll find amazing seasonal savings to prepare you for the fight against cold and flu season. Like Oregacillin to promote lung health. 30 capsules, regularly $34.95, now only $25. HHA Olive Leaf, the natural antiviral, normally $16.95, now 60 capsules are just $12. HHA Elderberry Power, a great flu and virus fighter, regularly $16.95, 60 capsules, now $10. Save on all our homeopathic detoxes. Choose from lungs, kidney, liver, brain, libido, or whole body. Normally $26.95, now just $20. Visit HerbalHealer.com and click on the Fall Winter Specials button to save on all our natural cold and flu fighting products. Also 
explore our Herbal Healer Academy correspondence courses that teach you how to handle your health naturally. HerbalHealer.com, healing the world with nature, one person at a time, since 1988. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. Woo! That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, 855 free It's possible we can squeeze you in here in the final segment of this uh, edition of Free Talk Live with Mark. And Chris. 855 3733 uh, You know, Christmas is coming up. The fact is uh, a lot of people are going to buy a lot of stuff online. I know they've got some day that is like not Black Friday. Is it that Cyber Monday? Is it supposed to be? The day Cyber Monday is, uh, yeah, it's like the stupid gimmick that they get you to shop at their stores on the internet. Yeah, so um, a lot of people are going to do a lot of online shopping. When you shop through Amazon, go through shop.freetalklive.com. We have a link there, and you'll get the same prices, same service, same everything you normally get, but you'll just give us a little vig in the process. It's shop.freetalklive.com. We've got other retailers there too, including uh, Walmart and I think Newegg and a variety of them. So we'd appreciate it. Shop.freetalklive.com. It costs you nothing but an extra click or so. Shop.freetalklive.com. Let's go to Wit calling in from Arizona. Wit, you're on Free Talk Live. Speaking of Christmas, I get a gift today. I thought you weren't going to call today. I was upset. I miss you. Oh, I loved your Halloween uh, costume. Uh, Halloween. Only, only, only good Chris Cantwell is a dead Cantwell. <laughs> Love yourself, deprecating humor. This is so great. <laughs> I miss you because I wasn't here last I week. Wanna, and like, well, I, I want to have a chance my... to respond to your lessons of World War One rant that you went on yesterday, uh, Mark Edge. Okay. Hey, 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 and hey, I quote, hey, hey. This is all and about I, me. And you I quote. And me. You and me, James. Much of what I do, you, quote, uh, do you have any idea? I was just trying I don't to explain want to, talk to, you. to you, you. No, hang on a second, because Mark doesn't want to talk to you. We've already been through this, okay? I missed you. Do you understand? I missed last week. Every Wednesday, I look forward to James calling into Free Talk Live. Last week, I was in New York, and now I'm back here. I've been waiting all night. You finally call in, and now you want to talk to Mark? I mean, I thought we had something special between us, you piece of crap. What are you doing to me? You can call me whatever you like. I Everybody, you all the all the amp, all the amp supporters of this program, they love it when you and I talk. It's an important part of the program. So don't you just go. 
blow off everybody who encourage us to keep on taking your obnoxious calls. I think he owned you with the Halloween costume, and like he doesn't have to go any farther. All right. I can respond to your lessons of World War One because I want you to hear this. This is important. Yeah. Because it might open. You. I just want to make you think a second time, and hopefully make a pig like your buddy there laugh. But <laughs> much of much you, of you win. Think, Bye. I, I, <laughs> much of what we think is we know about World War One is false. Chief among them seems to be the canard that the Versailles Treaty of 1919 that officially ended the war caused a far worse one 20 years later, usually in the sense of the unnecessarily harsh accorded, uh, accorded uh, defeated imperial Germany. Yeah. And I'm, in quote, I'm quoting an esteemed and eminent historian from Stanford University named well, Victor David Hansen. And I, you, should, yeah. I should like to continue to say about your foil that you seem to always fall back on. I called in yesterday to talk about World War II, and you instantly turned it to World War I. And being the son of a well, you veteran— asked of, me, You asked me a question. Be, 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 wait, hold on. You asked me a question, and you asked me which politician— would I blame the deaths of uh, you know my uncle and you, some of your relatives or whatever on? And I, the the politician I was what? coming to mind was Wilson. You blame of America. That's and, how you answered it. What? You answered blaming United States of America. No, entering the United States of America doesn't exist. Politicians who make policy exists. Okay, can I continue? Because you, I've already heard everything you had to say. I want you to hear what I have to say. We don't care about what you have to say. We we, we take your calls to make fun of you in front of our audience. Yourself and your and is your phone worse than usual today or something? Yeah, What's really wrong awful. with you? You have a phone. You, why don't you stop? Mark, How did you even get on here with a rotary phone? Don't you have to dial or something like that? Don't you need touch tones in 2014 to do things? Did you did I'm you sucking. hang up? Did you pick up the phone and like crank it and ask Mark, the operator to I, connect you to Free Talk Live in New I, Hampshire, or did you? What are you doing? What my dad would tell you while he'd be scratching his head is that if Germany hadn't uh, war torn through Belgium and then into France in 1914, America never would have gone to Germany, gone to France in 1918. Sure. And Germany. So uh, the point is, you blame United States of America. So you want to blame Versailles Bismarck? Treaty. And what happened 20 years later? Blame when Canada. again, the politicians to blame are the Japanese military junta. I knew the Japanese the were coming into this. It had to be the point. Japanese, yeah. And he thought, yeah, and he was talking mess during the during the previous segment. He was all like, "What's the with the Japan?" I only said that once. He says it every single time. He's always got a Japan reference. You brought up Japan. I've never brought it up. Never have, except for one just, time. The first time just I just brought it up right now. You just back. did it every time. The Japan. What did they have to do with the Bitcoin fire that dropped the hash rate and made everybody panic? Is that why Bitcoin is more expensive? James, go. Hey, you stupid white boy! You brought up Japan when Mark was talking about hey, China. Hey, don't be a racist. Don't be a racist. That's you. That's you bring thinking to the right. Japs. You know what? You you're you're offending my inner social justice warrior. I'm done with you. Irish. Done with you That's and your racism. Cotton core. I'm not done racist. With you call me that. My face. You, Thanks for the call. Hate, you just hate white people. <laughs> I Japanese supremacist. Don't know why he calls in and talks to you. I don't know why he does it. He's a glutton for punishment. <laughs> I I wonder. He, um, he look. I'm telling you, these guys they were abused as kids, right? So like getting publicly humiliated gives them like sort of like this guilty sexual arousal, right? No, and that's like. No. It's like my favorite kind, right? It's almost like when a woman humiliates you, you know, like getting like spanked or I don't know how much more detail I could go into, but you know, like a humiliating experience during sex. Do you ever enjoy that? I, I'm just thinking that when Wit comes and, and kills all you people, um, I just want him to know that, hey, I got a kid, man. I got a kid. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure that James would be very concerned about the well-being of future generations, you know. <laughs> Because I don't, I don't know. I think he's he probably thinks. I I, I imagine he's probably got some daddy issues of himself, well, you know. And he's like, well, if I kill everybody's father, then they won't have to grow up with this madness like I did, which made me a miserable call, talk radio caller. So, um, it's going to be very difficult for Wit to convince me that uh, my position is uh, wrong on World War One in the side of three or minutes or whatever that's going to be on the radio. I'd I'd recommend if you have uh, you know points to make in that area that you know somebody's got written an essay or whatever, link me at my email at market free 
TalkLive.com. I read World War I stuff all the time. But I think that probably the best evidence that I've got is that Hitler made those made the French sign a new treaty in the same railroad car that they signed the Treaty of Versailles in, in the same spot. Um, like, hmm, maybe he held a little resentment. So, I mean, I didn't even get what his issue was because I don't really tend to listen to the words that come out of his mouth. But so your his, his premise, your premise was that World War II was started because of the Treaty of Versailles or Versailles. Certainly and, the and, European theater. And and so that and the indication of it was this uh, this uh, uh, coincidence of being signed in the exact same place to the, when the French surrendered. And I think that that's pretty well established, right? I mean, it's World pretty War well was- established. And if there's an academic out there, and I'm sh- I would doubt not for a second that there is. Um, that is uh, going against it. That's what academics are supposed to do. They're supposed to take different and wild ideas um, and present them in the best fashion possible. The fact that you can find one person that uh, you know goes against the consensus, that's awesome. And I think that if they make a great case, I'd love to read it. But James is basically upset because America... Uh, it, it seems like it. That's yeah. um, you know. That's All what right. it seems like to me. I blamed America. I don't blame America for anything. America is dirt, and um, dirt doesn't oh commit God, you said wars. Dirt about America. <laughs> Politicians are the ones who start wars. I don't think World War II was really avoidable um, in the European theater. I think it would have been very difficult for the United States to avoid. Uh, World War Two. I think they could have avoided World War Two. They could have just like stayed home. I yeah, mean, they could have. You know, uh, they could have uh, not put sanctions against the Japanese and invited the attack on Pearl Harbor. Well, the um, sanctions were for some really horrific crimes that were going on in China. I mean, I I can understand why the United States chose to put those sanctions on. I'm not saying that they should be able to put sanctions on companies that, uh, you know, calling themselves Americans, but I, I can understand some, why they did. There's some really lousy things going on in Iran, but, you know, we go and we make sanctions against them, and it's this very predictable predictable path to war, and it's not and it's not as if this is lost on the central economic planners. I mean, some of these people might be stupid or incompetent, but you've got to imagine that they have some advisors who actually do have a grasp of history, and they're like, well, first you sanction them, and then you go to war with them. That's pretty much Human history. It, it, it agreed, um, but you know, the the imp- imperialist uh, nations of the world have had you know through time they had to change their their systems. Japan was changing late, and they were doing things that would have been considered probably okay in the time of the Opium Wars, but not so okay, um, you know, some decades later. Anyway, uh, I, I don't want to make apologies for it. I hate war. I mean, any war, drugs and war. You can uh, listen to more Free Talk Lives at archives.freetalklive.com. Check out freetalklive.com. In the meantime, it's been Mark with you. And ChristopherCatwell.com. Nothing. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me like, Do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Ovaltine. Give your kids the nutrition they need to be their best. Visit us at OvaltineUSA.com. Telling your child about healthy food choices is important, but showing her what to eat goes a lot further. Have her help create the grocery list, then bring her to the store with you. Picking out healthy foods together helps kids get in the habit of thinking about what they're eating every day. For more tips like these, visit us at Parenthood.com slash Your Family Today. 
Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Cap Black Radio is up next, live after the news, on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Wednesday, November 12, 2014. Silver is trading at $15.66 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,169 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $395. Antiwar.com reports U.S. drone strikes fired four missiles at a house and vehicle in North Waziristan, killing at least six people and wounding three others, according to local tribesmen. Though Pakistani officials identified the slain as militants and claimed some of them were reportedly foreigners, none of the slain in the attack has actually been identified by name. This is, of course, standard operating procedure for U.S. drone strikes in Pakistan, and it is extremely rare for any victim, whether civilian or militant to ever be publicly identified. The U.S. has increased the number of attacks in Pakistan's tribal areas in recent months after nearly a year of halting such attacks at the behest of the Sharif government. Since the resumption, the Pakistani government has not offered the loud condemnation of the U.S. strikes that was common previously. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800 874 9760. The Las Vegas Review-Journal reports Jim Dunsing, an attorney from Clark County, Nevada, was convicted Monday on three felony charges stemming from a roadside confrontation with Las Vegas police. After more than a week-long trial, a jury convicted Dunsing on charges of resisting a police officer, carrying a concealed weapon, and unlawful possession of a firearm in connection with a traffic stop on October 29, 2009. An officer shot Dunsing three times when he tried to run from the scene. Dunsing ran an unsuccessful bid on the Libertarian ticket this year to become Clark County's top prosecutor and head the office that pursued the criminal charges against him. He was the only opponent to incumbent Steve Wolfson, who was re-elected with 72% of the vote. Dunsing took the witness stand last week at trial and said the officer never told him why he was being arrested. Dunsing told jurors, quote, I was trying to process what was going on. I thought he had the wrong person, end quote. Dunsing was hit with probes from a stun gun and started to run because he feared for his life because he has heart and lung problems. Dunsing said that running wasn't really a conscious decision. His law practice centers on fixing parking tickets, and when he filed to run for district attorney, he vowed to stop prosecuting nonviolent crimes. District Judge Michelle Levitt ordered Dunsing held in Clark County's detention center until a January sentencing where he faces 12 years in prison. In the spirit of Motorhome Diaries,